Hello and welcome to Seaford College for the Seaford Tens, the annual tournament to kick off the short format season. It is going to be an exciting day here in these lovely conditions. Lovely-ish anyway, there's no sunshine, but it's not raining and we're all very happy about that. Seaford College against Dulwich College It's what is what's going to kick us off. Rather, Seaford College on the left-hand side of your screens, just rising from their huddle and on the right-hand side of your screens, Dulwich College, the former Schools Cup and Champions Trophy winners. Seaford College aiming for a first title here at their home tournament. And alongside me is Sam Roberts, esteemed company. Sam, how are you? Uh, I'm very well. I I've been down. I I I've acclimatised myself to this wonderful part of the world. We uh, stayed over last night and had a lovely curry uh, just up the road. So I I'm, I'm ready to go. I, I wonder whether these two teams are. And I wonder whether this first round of matches is going to be interesting in sense of just getting a feel of each other and working their way through it. What do you reckon, Angus? Yeah, I think you could be right. I was sat in a bit of traffic this morning behind a couple of the team buses. So I, I think there's a few, a few people on a bit of a hurried start today. The, uh, the teams are a bit slow coming out. I wonder if that might be why. Indeed. Seaford College putting the pressure on early on against Dulwich. He had a tricky old 15 aside season. A tricky start here in the 10s. The Seaford College get across the line. Yeah, work that well. Turnover ball, always strike with turnover ball, and uh, into the hands on the on the left wing. Uh, quick thinking and uh, paying dividends. It was sharp work in defence, blasting through on that ruck. It just spilt there, wasn't it? And then, and out on the left hand side. I think we're going to name him as Tommy Newell, an upper sixth former, and he crashes over. Well, it's going to be a feature of today. He's trying to work out. Who's who when it comes to uh, the players on the field? Uh, people don't realise, perhaps tuning in, just how little information we have as commentators. People running up to us with scrawled bits of paper, most of them nicknames. Uh, no, we haven't got... No, what, you want numbers as well, do you? You want numbers as well? Information's vastly overrated. But uh, Seaford will be happy with that. Bit of a breeze down here, Angus. I, I, it is great condition. I mean, we are talking about the end of January. We shouldn't be complaining, should we? We can still feel our fingers, for instance. We should be all right today. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's certainly an interesting time of day to be playing rugby. Ten o'clock in the morning. It certainly is. Well, last time we were down here at Seaford, they were uh, they were playing Hurstbeer Point College in what I can only describe as some of the most horrific conditions I've ever seen rugby being played in. We were right on the edge of darkness almost from the time, from the minute the game kicked off. To the extent that from I'm in the same commentary position today as I was then, and I had a scrum four or five yards from me, and I couldn't see the far side of it. It, <laughs> it was that dark and that horrid out there. But uh, Seaford came through that one, and they're off to... So a tidy start here. We're playing nine minutes each way, so we're actually a good chunk of the way through. Yeah, with, with, with these shortened versions of the game, see if we're making another break. It is very important just how you start the game. Difficult to come back with such a short amount of time in the game, but again, numbers on this right-hand side. And the handling just about lets them down. And they'll come back. It is difficult, isn't it, Angus, in, in the short format to, uh, to to sort of... If you're on the end of, a, of an early strike or a couple, you, you know, you haven't got much time to, to think about it and come back. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a really good point. The, you know, if you can get yourself on the scoreboard early, it just... It takes a lot of that pressure off if you're the side that's up. And as the, as the side chasing it, you know, t the clock starts to become your enemy more than anything else. Really hard work to get back into things. Now, I'm going to make a stab in the dark that the man putting the ball into the scrum is Ben Birch, a lively halfback with a good all-round skill set, so I'm told. Absolutely. And for our benefit, wearing six, which is normally the open side number. So there we go. This is what we're up against today. Maybe he's got his shirt on upside down. 
Anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was uh, talking to my uh, my young son, Will Roberts, uh, on the way down here, talking about who's who's in the mood for this. Who, who are the who are the the, the people to look out for school-wise. Who, who, who have you come to see? I mean, obviously last year's winners, Trinity, st step out to me, but but are, are there any others that, that you think should play well today? Well, I think it's going to be a really interesting day because you've got an awful lot of teams that are sort of, uh, they're short of a few of perhaps their, their more storied names because um, we're, in, we're in a break weekend in the, the Premiership uh, Academy League. So the, there's a few academies that have gone well have a run out and there's others who have gone no, no you need to exactly. have a rest and there's people on um, counties trials and divisional trials lambs and, the and things lambs like that, yeah. and all that so there's a lot of players there's a lot of players missing but what that does is really open things up as you say Trinity are obviously uh, a side to look out for I think Ipswich school yeah late entrance um, after after Oakham sadly had to drop out but Ipswich have been been real stalwarts through the 15 a side season I know they've got huge ambitions they to have. make an impact, so I, I think they're a team to to look out for. Yeah, a strong strong coaching setup, and and when you look at, at the, the sort of uh, the amount that they bring with them and the the amount of uh, input they're, they're they're thinking about the game, you can see that this is a long term project for Ipswich. And these sorts of occasions coming down here, they probably will have to travel further than most Ipswich. Um, it, it will it will definitely dictate exactly how serious they are about it all. Um, it, for those of you who don't know, uh, there is a Ford in charge of Ipswich. Uh, the young is he the youngest brother? He is the youngest of all the Fords. Well, bar, bar some of the now <laughs> the children of other Fords. <laughs> we'll see for down that left hand touchline again. Touchline again, oh. and we'll see a fair bit of this today. Slinging it back in field. All the skill sets. Seaford have done well to keep it alive. Again, there's numbers out here. Dulwich caught a little bit narrow. Seaford again keeping it in hand well i would suggest as is the uh the weight with all rugby at the moment ruck speed today is going to be important the ability to keep the ball alive almost probably not rucks and and keeping it in the hand as much as you possibly can dulwich sweep up a little bit yeah absolutely the the speed of ball is going to be going to be all important and uh, to go back to my hobby horse of of earlier this season what we're going to see an awful lot of is just how skillful young rugby players across yeah, England are. Well, they are contrary to Eddie Jones's belief. They are, they are, and 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 this is why one of the reasons I'm I'm back here. Uh, it's not Richard Jackson's company. It is, <laughs> it is, it is the it is the wonderful rugby and uh, the speed uh, with which these boys think. Not just the way that they run, because we all know they run very fast, but they think really quickly as well. And, and when you look at the length and breadth of this, yes, this is the Southern Tens, but we go as far east as Ipswich. We go as far west as the Brecon Beacons. It really does pull a good amount of people in. Yeah, it's a fantastic tournament, and they're, they're working so hard to try and to try and grow this. There's a there's a real sense now that this is this is seen very much as a sort of first marker in the in the short format season, and they're trying to make a a really good fist of making it the, the key moment in the uh, in the season and I'll tell you what if we get anything like we got last year that was brilliant last year it. really really good I don't think Dulwich have been out their own half so far we've been wittering on haven't we I mean <laughs> I'm not sure I'm not sure I'm not 100% sure but I, I don't think Dulwich have quite got out their own half yet they are playing into this breeze a stiffening breeze which will make it a little bit more difficult they are, and it's a it, deceptive as it might be. It's a it looks like a slight so, slope as well. So there's a there's a little bit to work against. Better line up. The ground staff here have done an absolutely fantastic job as well. A few months back, we were we were almost waterlogged on on this field, such as the uh, the deluge that had been had over a few weeks. But they've they've tidied things up fantastically well. Yeah, kick through. And Seaford will gather and return with interest. Super footwork. Seaford finds the man on the inside. Oh, and again, oh, to the floor. Now Dulwich are going to get it. This is schoolboy rugby encapsulated. It's what, three, three offloads in, in three passes <laughs> there. Fantastic. Short side, inside ball, dummies. 
work over the ball, not quite there. Referees have got, got their work cut out today, I tell you. Not just commentators having to work hard today. First foray into the other half for Dulwich. They work it well. Down that uh, right-hand side. The kick through. Looks as though they've got the pace just to gather. Oh, that's a good score. Well, who needs to spend time in the opposition half when all you need is 10 seconds? <laughs> Dulwich College. Clinical. Yeah. And he... He's a big man, and he has to get down hard here. He's, uh, he's asked a question on this short side. Ball into the hand. Go on, have a chase of this. Maybe the call came in. He outstrips him. Fantastic pace, and then good work to be able to get that pick up in. But again, as we've been saying, it's that handling, isn't it? It's the interchanges between each other in the build-up to that before the kick is released. Work themselves a bit of space to get in the front foot. And away they go. Knowledge of um, producing some, some good schoolboys over the years. Um, go back a, a long way and find a, a fair few tasty front row characters from, from Dulwich College. Certainly have, yeah. The, the Flatman Sheridan Easter <laughs> era. <laughs> Indeed. Is, uh, one to remember. Who are they affiliated with? Where do, where do Dulwich play there? Their, where do their academy boys go into? Uh, it's a bit of a... A lot of them go to Saracens. A couple, yeah. of, a couple of lads have been at Quinns. Zach Carr last year went from uh, from Dulwich College over to, to Harlequins. Um, fantastic player, actually, Zach Carr. One of nine forwards that Harlequins signed up from the academy onto pro contracts last year. And that, and that, and there's a real indication of of how good it is. I mean, we we can sit here and talk about it, but when when teams like Harlequins are investing in, in that and, and seeing it and, and and putting pen to paper, it just shows you that this is a genuinely strong stepping stone into pro into pro rugby. It really does, and it also I think is a. There's a lot of talk at the moment in the in the pro ranks about the you know the how hard it is with the you know got two fewer teams than there were previously and, and salary caps are coming down and stuff so there's, there's less money to spend but as an 18 19 year old academy lad there's never been a better time because you know, without being too crass about it you're quite cheap so there's a lot of space for for young guys to come through and to to get their opportunity where perhaps they might not have um before and also the strength of buck super rugby and the partnerships that the premiership teams have you know, the opportunities for young players have never never been greater. Would you say there's a bit of a sweet spot as regards the format and the structure of the game? I mean, potentially schoolboy rugby isn't isn't quite set up for the sort of structure that pro rugby has, and therefore there is a little bit of more, more eyes up, you know, play with your head, play in the moment sort of stuff. And, th and this is what you see. This is why schoolboy rugby is so attractive, is because you see enough structure to have make a good game but really 70 percent of it is you know play what's in front of you and give it a go which, which is kind of where rugby wants to needs to be absolutely and if, if you talk to to some of the school coaches uh, around the country one of the one of the real struggles they have is with you know quite promising players that that academies are linked to and often comes down to, to players like wingers where academies obviously want them to get to get tight on those fundamentals you know high balls and chasing kicks etc and schools are going oh we just want to get the ball in their hands let's let's just let them play and you you, you sometimes get a couple of struggles on, on that front but it is because the school game is so open and such a there's such an availability for you to just show your show your skills off really and um, we're going to see plenty of that today because the uh, the ability of some of these lads I mean some of the, some of the guys that you, you don't even necessarily think it of come out with all sorts of outstanding skills. Seaford again, going through phases. A little look from the nine after Chad's, I think this is, uh, playing uh, Conduit. Gets the ball back now and has to work hard to free his arms. Big handoffs coming in. Schoolboy rugby is not for the faint hearted. Another example, great offloading. Seaford, half through the gap. They've got to find the right person. Dulwich just about do enough to bring their man down. 
Left they go. Look, numbers as well. Chads. It works just about. No, it comes off the face, I think, of number 15, George Gibbons, the upper sixth former. Gets one in the chops for his uh, for his pains. And Dulledge will get the ball back. But there again, I can't really uh, give it enough, really. Just the idea of how they they keep the ball alive and want to play. Well, that's the thing. It's the, it's the ambition, isn't it, to just fulfil a move. Why play another phase when you could try and finish it off in one go? Absolutely love it. Chads is a player to look out for today. When when he's on the money, he can be absolutely electric and uh, and the heartbeat of his side. Yeah, Hampshire County player, Lamb squad as well. Sure designs on things a little bit further up. We'll have to see how he goes today. Any pressure on Seaford, do you think? Being a being little, the home team, as yeah, it were. Yeah, I think a little bit, but I think actually largely from themselves. I I. I I know how ambitious they are as a as a school, as a group. Um, I know how much Sean Thompson, the the director of rugby, wants to wants to see his side perform well. I, I think it'd be an internal thing on each other of wanting to do well at home. I think they know that they they have all the ingredients to be a really really top side, and they'll want to demonstrate that. Well, there's uh, scrum dominance for those of you who thought that set piece was. Uh Dead in the water at tens. It's not. The big boys still have their fun time. Often reminds me of rugby league a little bit, tens and sevens, where the occasional scrum where everyone decides, ah, do you know what? We're <laughs> going to go for it. <laughs> I caught you out. You didn't think we were going to do this. We are. <laughs> we are going to have a set piece. And here's another one, a line out, Seaford. Uh, it's seven all, so a score here with uh, a few moments to go could be uh, could be quite neat for the, uh, the Seaford boys playing... Uh, in front of this wonderful vista down here. Uh, not far from Brighton, not far from Chichester, not far from Bognor Regis, if you know your British seaside tie, tie, uh, places, or should I say? And as I say that, Seaford scamper in around the left-hand side and do get that score. I'm just going to see number eight. Yeah, Fraser Lynn, the captain, doing a captain's job. Tidy try, that. Back-to-back -back set pieces, well worked. Conversion, Conversion a bit skew with. I was just about to say. But um, let's have another look at it here. Short little miss move at the lineup. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of those cheeky ones, isn't it? It's a good bit of footwork, actually, from, uh, from Fraser Lynn. One of those cheeky ones that you, all too often you see getting pulled up for not going five, but they've, they've got the drills right there. And got themselves over. Yeah, Fraser Lynn. Mother is Jenny Lynn, who played for the Red Roses in two World Cup finals. So, uh, strong pedigree in the Lynn household. And I'm sure she's uh, either here or watching on. No pressure on Fraser then, eh? No, uh, just the two World Cup finals. <laughs> Dulwich, going to try and strike from their own half. Turnover from Seaford. And Chads has got the ball again, looking on that outside arc, trying to get that soft shoulder. Lynn, once again, digging in, doing some good work. Oh, and penalised. See, Seaford, uh, I think, not rolling away. Oh, holding on to the ball. A good front rower's quick tap there from, from Dulwich as well. <laughs> No, knowing you're going to be called back, but looking like you're trying to go fast. <laughs> Nowhere near the mark. So briefly explain the uh, the setup of the day. Are these teams playing in groups and on different pitches? Yeah. We're looking at two on uh, on next gen, uh, but. There's, there's other pitches going on as well. Yes, yeah, so we've got four pitches, four groups. Um, every single team is going to appear on the live stream before uh, before the lunchtime break, which is uh, which is always good. We like to we like to make sure that everyone gets a chance to uh, to be on TV. That's, you know, they get that opportunity all the time. Uh, but yeah, four groups of of four. Top team in each group qualifies to the cup semi final. Second to the plate, third to the vase, fourth to the bowl. So everyone's playing a minimum of four games and those that get to the finals will be playing five games. So there's uh, there's plenty of rugby for everyone. 
and uh, and four trophies up for grabs. Of course, the uh, the main gong being that cup that Trinity won in some style last year. Oh, I tell you what, I didn't mention them earlier, but I do fancy Christ College Brecon to have a bit of a go, yeah. and also Cardiff and Vale College. Brecon were brilliant last year. Uh, I think beaten by Trinity in the final, weren't they? Yeah, in a cracking game as well. Really good game. Uh, some really strong athletes coming all the way from Brecon. Uh, so I think they'll be good. Felstead seem to have put a good team in as well. Brilliant hand, some Seaford down that right-hand touch line and scorching away is young Tommy Newell. I think that's him, the gold numbering. Is it 14 or 11? Like 14 oh, to 14, me, yeah. my mistake. I think I've got his name wrong. Hamish Williams. Hamish Just Williams. about where I am, yeah. I've got it. Sussex County player showing a clear, clean pair of heels down the right-hand touch line there. And the, uh, the, uh, the conversion is good. And I would say that perhaps will put the nail in the coffin for Dulwich in this first game. Yeah, this has been a really tidy performance from Seaford College, actually. And Chad's again on the making this space down on that right hand side well once you get the hand the ball in the hands of a pacey winger there's only one outcome isn't there yeah he runs quite fast I, I think I run fast whereas he does actually run fast you know do you know the difference I'm, I'm very <laughs> familiar with difference <laughs> we all think we run fast don't we but we we don't I, I still still remember <laughs> the uh, the day that I discovered I could no longer run as fast as I thought I could as well <laughs> halfway through a gap and suddenly realised, oh, oh, I was expecting to be further away than I am now. This isn't ideal. Why has that front row forward got, got his hand on my shoulder? And at my size, that meant that retirement was ensuing pretty quickly afterwards. Not a lot of other strings to the bow. I've been impressed by Seaford here. They, this, it's, they've been the dominant side throughout, but it was, you know, it was all relatively close for the opening 12, 13 minutes, but a real lesson that patience even in these shortened formats, pays off. If you just keep keep plugging away, the rewards will come. And, and you know, back-to-back -back tries for Seaford College, put them in control with only a couple of minutes left. And I think you're going to force issues, aren't you? If you can keep a good structure, you can keep a good defensive shape against the people, they're going to start making riskier and riskier passes. Dulwich here, however, just find the outside edge and then scamper their way through. But it is going to be a little, you, you may mention patience there, just just from a defensive point of view, just keep people in place, get into the right position, trust your processes, and you will eventually get the ball back. And uh, and that is what Seaford have done so far quite well. Here's another example. Look, Coppo, turnover ball. Yes, there was the line break. Yes, Seaford had to retreat 20 yards, but they just had to keep their processes together and they've run out winners. Absolutely, and a, a very, very well-earned victory for Seaford College, home side. Getting things up and running in pretty decent style, I'd say. Okay, Superb work again. from Seaford College. We've got uh, next match on here is Ipswich versus RGS High Wickham, and on the other pitch, Christ College uh, Brecon versus Halebury. And the rugby coming thick and fast. We've got to get ourselves sorted. Lovely to be here, Angus. I'm looking forward to it. Should be good. I'm sure I'll see you later on in the uh, in the afternoon. You certainly will be. You certainly will be. Final score here on Oval 1. Seaford College 17, Dulwich College 7. Return to Play is the UK's leading sports medicine provider for schools and clubs.
we've kicked off in the second game. Ipswich versus uh, RGS High Wycombe. William Roberts has joined me. Hello, Will. Hello. Well, uh, this is uh, certainly a game with uh, two very similar sides. Um, both physical, but have the wherewithal to use their skill out wide. So I think this will be a very even affair and create quite the grudge match. Yeah, a couple of mistakes on the floor there. The referee having a good look. And uh, the first one a judge to... Uh, to be the knock-on. Knock on another scrum. Scrum time, uh, certainly uh, an opportunity to uh, restart, often in tens, get the ball going. But we did see in the last game, a bit of a sentency. But here both sides, Ipswich looking for that uh, break in midfield. Good handling. Away they come with the ball. Slightly That's high hit, down. maybe ducked down into it, lowered his height. And actually the penalty goes the way of High Wickham. Ball ricochets around and then out. There is uh, some big, strong lads out there. Some big hits going in. Knock on. Ipswich have it. Advantage over calls the referee. The ball is bouncing into the 22. I Wickham have got to be clever about this. Good work to get the ball back. That kicking game is uh, seemingly going to be used quite a lot. I think uh, the wind conditions as they are means that you can have a considerable advantage when going from, from left to right uh, in terms of territory, but when going from, from right to left, those attacking kicks and stamps over the top just hold up in the wind quite nicely, which creates a real headache for defenders and means that those bouncing balls can be picked up by the attacking team. It will work quite nicely in the game on Oval 2 between uh, Felsted and Bishop Wordsworth and uh, I think could very well be uh, utilised once again throughout the tournament. Ipswich down this left-hand narrow side. I think uh, perhaps, uh, obviously, speed of ruck ball is going to be crucial today. Get the ball back into play. There's a player I recognise, Lucas Nisbet Hadaway, in with the offload, and he's kept the ball alive for Ipswich, and they swing it out to the right-hand side. Big Fens coming in. Oh, yes, High Wickham having to uh, put their shoulders collectively to the wheel. Again, quick ball. This bit had away, plays conduit, and the ball is spilt. We will see this a fair amount today in the shortened version of the game. The, uh, the counter attack, very, both teams very susceptible to it, throwing everything into the attack, then having to get back defensively. First game for both of these sides. It's uh, still only 10.30 in the morning, so uh, I think um, they can be forgiven for a, a few handling errors to begin with and uh, 
with fatigue Five. setting in later on Six. in the tournament it means you get a sort of a honeymoon period around lunchtime where you get sort of the best quality rugby possible and uh, well, we're just going to have to warm up into that, but it doesn't stop words. Uh, it doesn't stop RGS I Wickham from being able to throw the ball around. A tap tackle there was crucial. 50-22. It's going to work, is it? 50-22. Yes. Uh, another chat between referee and, and touch judge. I think the touch judge has given it to uh, the whip switch. Looks that way. Yeah. Chichi going. Doesn't matter now, does it? Well, I was going to say that their uh, line out seemed to be uh, functioning independently and, well, can't do anything without a good throw. Uh, set piece, of course. Crucial. Good set piece today will uh, give you Five. loads of set. set up opportunity. Hi, Wickham. Flat ball, strong runner. Two men in, in quick attendance. Again, big man running straight lines. Hip switch have got to be uh, clever in, in defence here. Oh, the switch doesn't work. Ball is bouncing around at Ipswich, do eventually get hold of it. And we'll try and run the ball out of the 22. And there's a little bit of numbers here if they can work it wide. This bit Hadaway holds his man. <laughs> Referee's whistle gives Ipswich a little bit more. This bit Hadaway, quick tap and go. We'll score this this game. Both sides uh, throwing big punches at the moment, but evading each other. Trying to test each other physically, I think. Uh, obviously, as we mentioned, handling being somewhat of an issue, um, which is uh, caused for players to try and keep the ball in hand, keep it safe, try and win those one-on-one -on -one collisions as uh, shoulders are still relatively Press. soft. Um, but yeah, at the moment, both teams just holding strong. Oh, Jess Highwickham again. Screen pass in, then that little tap through. The ball is going to bounce tantalizingly towards that touch line. And once again, Ipswich get a throw inside their own 22. Needs to be better than the last one. Nine minute halves, if you're just joining us. Not a huge amount of time in which to recover. So uh, opening scores tend to be quite uh, crucial. Again, line out, doesn't look ever so straight, the referee says, yeah, again. Deja vu, exactly the same. Had away at the back and uh, didn't work out. So literally in the exact same position that we were three minutes ago. They ran uh, very aggressive lines off uh, off nine last time. Fly half this time oh, just God, knocks it on. <laughs> and here come Ipswich. Offload is good. Dummy on the inside pass. RGS High Wickham have managed to snaffle it. They got the ball back. Once again, big tackles. Again, the nudge through. This could work. How's the gather? It sits up brilliantly. And High Wickham get the result they were after. So many nudges through, and that one eventually sits up. That those attacking kicks that I mentioned could be beneficial for the team going from left to right just means that the ball travels a little bit further than you want it to and so difficult to give up a, in, in what is such a physical encounter so far so difficult to give up a player in that front line to 
put someone in behind and well Ipswich have paid the ultimate price for that and uh, bounce the ball arguably the the difference there high Wickham and this uh, battle of uh, very two very large schoolboy sides just about uh, coming out with it and they will huddle up and, and get together a long old day here uh, running all the way through, I think a minimum of five matches for every side that comes down. And uh, Ipswich have travelled a long way. And I wonder if they uh, they set off this morning. I can't imagine they did. Maybe they stayed overnight nearby. And uh, they've got to get their, their thoughts together. They will play with the wind in the second half. But this is a great, uh, well, this is a great showcase of, of young schoolboy rugby and with your young rugby hat on you must be very pleased to see the uh, the way that that young rugby is coming through it's a it's a perfect transition for players to to move in between the two main disciplines of, of the sport 15s these boy, both these teams have had very successful 15 seasons and will be looking to transition strongly into the seven circuit there's a uh, a lot of talent within this, uh, within both these sides. So uh, they'll, they'll be probably looking towards Rosslyn Park as the as the end point. But they need these sort of tournaments to to get themselves clicking and and to uh, sort of make that smooth transition between the two uh, tens and uh, between the two fifteens and seven sports. So uh, tens provides that perfect sort of bridge between them to sort of get themselves back into gear heading into the new year. Where, where do where do teams need to get things right in a tennis side game? Where, where are their where are their main areas? Their main sort of building blocks for a tennis side game? Thank Difficult you. question, I know. Yeah, it, well, I, I think it definitely comes down to front foot ball, and and I think a lot of teams are focused heavily on uh, including a lot of loose forwards and uh, trying to accompany them as uh, as back back rowers slash centres. That sort of hybrid that seems to be becoming ever so more popular especially within schoolboy rugby and those players are real stars of the show uh, you look at this extra side the likes of uh well, you, you could argue Harry Simpson, Ollie Saddleton, Mark van der Veen would probably be a, a, an excellent example of those sort of dynamic either centres or back rowers that could also provide a bit of power uh, and pace. So I think those players are going to certainly be the difference. We haven't seen too much of either of those three so far, but uh, I'm sure we'll be able to, to, to see them shine as we, we head on throughout the day. We haven't been given any, uh, any numbers or any information on either of these sides, so uh, we're... Uh we're flying by the seat of our pants as regards who's who. Hopefully still, if you're tuning in, you're uh, getting a very good idea of the talent as regards schoolboy rugby. Certainly the uh, ability to keep the ball alive and run hard. Left it goes, good hands, managed to keep it there and the roll out of the tackle again. Keeps the speed of the move going. Expediency the key, especially early on in this uh, in this tournament. Got to use all your energy to uh, rack it up. The uh, referee sees holding on. Breakdown is going to be key, of course, and referees are going to be on their metal looking to make sure that people don't slow it down. Onto the right-hand side come Ipswich, bit of gas, and away they go. And Ipswich, if they can finish it off, will strike here. A little shimmy on the inside and then the outside line. And that's crucial for Ipswich. Billy Reid, that is uh, wearing six, usually deployed in the back three. He's uh, certainly got that sort of spring in his step and using it to full effect there. Excellent work down the outside edge and just having the the skill to finish that score off you'd see a lot of players who would, wouldn't be able to necessarily stay on their feet and still compete uh, but Billy Reid there showing his class and quality that kick is uh, a decent nudge but uh, wide which could prove crucial yeah, Ipswich still behind I'll have another look at it here they, uh, they quite quickly find the outside man and it is Reid who has the, uh, the pace to get away from the covering defenders in the first place but this is what Will's talking about here, this moment here, just to uh, have the inside, uh, the lurch inside and then outside and trust his, uh, trust his finishing on the outside. Really good score. Oh, 
Now Jess Highway can come forward again with the ball. Some more big handoffs. And now the Buckinghamshire side come forward. Again, the breakdown being incredibly well contested. Reed getting in the way there. Switch. This bit had away. Left hand side out wide they go again and Ipswich are making hay here. Almost into the corner the referee says there is a flag up and slowly but shortly the uh, the touch judge borrowed as he is from one of the Ipswich substitutes makes his way down the field. Is it, is it one of the uh, I think it's high, high, high wicked men who's Get his late, flag late up on very parade? Quickly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's been told, get your flag up and get down there, man. Avon Grace and uh, another line out in the own 22. They didn't work very well for Ipswich. I wonder why they work here for High Wycombe. Again, a little bit scrappy, but they come away with it. And there's huge holes for them to roll through. Tackles eventually come in. Ball is a, a little bit loose and nervously they pounce on it. That's their own 22. Right they go. And he's eventually picked up. Playing well, the uh, young man with 12 on his back. Referee says uh, we'll come back for offside. I wonder how far they're going to try and push their luck with this kick to touch. Very much into the wind and uh, relatively conservatively just to make sure that they can find the whitewash. So, uh, is it RGS how Wickham have got it? platform just inside the half. Yeah, nose is just in front, confirmed there by the referee. The two points, the difference. Line out. Again, not straight. Snaffled by Ipswich, but then turned over. Ipswich will go left, oh, big, Sid. long pass. Draws uh, appreciation from Will Roberts alongside me. But into touch they go, the uh, man with the flag on the far side playing his part once more. Offensive line is uh, 11. Jacob Ford is uh, certainly trying to keep players as fresh as possible. There's uh, changes happening off the field sort of every other minute or so. So uh, whether that denies sort of good continuity and fluidity or keeps players fresh and well drilled, we'll, we'll find out, I guess. But uh, still certainly an interesting decision tactically from the, from the Ipswich team. Ipswich bring it really neatly. Infield, they managed not to allow the ball out. GS uh, High Wickham have had to go back and under a little bit of pressure, five meters out, and there's the penalty. Read that again. Be, that could be what Ipswich are after. There are numbers out on this far side. Lucas Nisbet oh. Hadaway has a try taken from him by the referee who judges that pass to have gone forward. Big Lucas would have liked that one. He has Mother Nature who technically sort of tapped that one forward, the wind just picking up as that ball left the hands of the nine and in what would have usually been a picturesque sort of pass it just shifted forward slightly and chance goes a begging for it so it should take the lead later on pressure still on high wickham though quick restart and i wonder whether they'll kick it they will spiral into the wind Ipswich are going to get this back still in the 
High Wycombe half, step, oh. offload, beautifully off that left hand. Play on! Ipswich player gets back to his feet exceptionally well, and he keeps bouncing people like a pinball. And again, Ipswich find their way through. So much better, they're finding real form here, Ipswich, and they Backer! lurch towards the line. He goes again, that's brilliant awareness to the ball, drop the ball, the pick try. it up and score the try. Excellent work. What a response from Ipswich. I mean, keeping the ball alive superbly and just having those hands and vision to get it out wide. I mean, the structure implied there, it was sort of the, the real sort of example of a, a very successful side, the, a team that can create structure out of chaos. And well, that's exactly what Ipswich managed to do there and in off the post as well. Just everything clicking for the Norfolk side at the moment. Ipswich is in Suffolk, but we'll move on. Hey ho. <laughs> it is ten, very it's, it's ten thirty for us as well. You've got to remember that. <laughs> I, you know how how serious the Norfolk Suffolk <laughs> divide is. The Norwich and Ipswich talk that goes on. But yeah, you, you mentioned them before the game to me. Ipswich do look like uh, a really good package in this TENS tournament. They look as though they've got the skill base. They look as though they've got the si size. And uh, Jacob Ford looks as though he's got the resources. <coughs> he mentioned the amount of people he's getting on and off the field, giving everyone a little bit of a go. That's the other thing as well, getting everyone used to this, uh, this, this type of game. 19 players, so it's effectively sort of two sides that uh, you're going to have to utilise. All players need at least half a game uh, in every in every game, so that's uh, what what sort of required. So some teams will look to mass change at half time. Others will look to play quarters each. But uh, Ipswich are looking to sort of change as they go and well it's it's meaning that players are, are staying afresh and, and staying on it as much as possible uh, we're in the red zone as far as i'm concerned we've had enough time play the referee's playing penalty advantage here if you like unless it goes dead i think we're going to continue on i wick him down this left hand side he's slightly isolated needs his friends with him they get the ball back and the penalty the other way this time for a neck roll Rory Hollis will just tap this and kick it out. See the game. Indeed he does. And uh, an opening salvo victory for Ipswich. Uh, a good one for them. They win their first game. IGS High Wickham will return and uh, try to work out where they go from here. They look a good side as well. Uh, but uh, a crucial victory for hey, Ipswich early on. So first game for them. 12-7 the final score. So round three matches as follows. On Oval 1, we have Gordon versus Carlton Vale College. On Oval 2, we have Epsom versus Solidale School. On Stubbs 1, Seabird versus uh, Felstead. And on Stubbs 2, we have Dulwich versus Bishop Wordsworth. Please can I ask all teams, uh, thank you for not all winning off on pitches. Yeah, the brown staff have done a fantastic job to keep them intact for today, so please, 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 walk up on any available space that you can. Good luck at the next round of matches. All teams can start making their way to pitches now, that will be fantastic, and referees, thank you. On Oval 1, we have Gordons versus Cardinal Vale College. On Oval 2, Epsom versus Solihull. We have our ice cream games. 
Stomach one, one seep in the first spell, spell set. set. And on number two, Dunnett, Wood, Wood, Wood. Good luck, everybody. Next game on this pitch is Cardiff and Vale versus Gordons. Um, just a few scores on the third on matches. Players uh, shaking hands. We have Belstead College versus Tiffith Woodward, 15-12 Belstead. We have Gordons versus Epsom, great game over there. Epsom College won that one, 21 12 Gordon's in the uh, in the green on the right hand side. Cardiff and Vale have got the ball to kick off. Cardiff and Vale uh, do kick us off. Good offload. We've seen so much of it so far already this morning. Offloading game. Gordon's making hay. Big men breaking the first tackle and then uh, allowing others to uh, run off them. just uh, looking to try and get a mismatch. They've withheld the uh, Gordon's assault in the first opening couple of minutes. More big, strong hits coming in. Come down the right-hand side. Ball spilt eventually. Gordon's get it. Again, the ball uh, chucked and onto the floor. A little bit of a, a goose step. Large unit moving very quickly. Number one on his back from Gordon's. No uh, team news from them that I can uh, rely on, I don't think. I do have something for Cardiff and Vale, so I will potentially try and uh, put names to faces. Gordon's, however, scrambling well, working hard up that right hand touch line. And the ball knocked forward, and I think they'll come back for our first scrum. Will Roberts uh, is back alongside me. He went to uh, try and find out some more information on team news. Nothing from Gordon's on this, so unfortunately they will be... Uh, just referred to as their team. Five, Not that that will stop you too much enjoying things. Cardiff and Vale. Come right. Gordon sweep left-hand side. Get to it, George. Connor Milsom, I think it is, wearing 14 for Cardiff and Vale. Uh, that's all wrong, I'm being told. Those are just the, uh, no, no, the numbers being given... Uh, by the school, they're not to do with their shirt numbers. That does make things very much more difficult for us. Make their way into the uh, Gordon's half. Hands off three, on the tackle. Cardiff and Vale, quick thinking again. The offload works, trying to get it away again. Goes to the floor instead. Connor's on, Connor's on. Nice, Elliot. It's fine, George, boom, come backwards. That's a ball. 
ground. They're going out, he's on the ground. Can we get in there? They're going blue. Penalty goes against Cardiff and uh, not 10, says the referee. They go further back. Gordon's going to another tap and go. And then they cut through Gordon's away. Has he got the speed? Cover comes across. Goes quite high, eventually gets hold of him onto the 22 yard line. Another penalty, and this time the referee's going to stop and have a word. Ball again for Gordons to spin wide. Into the hands down this left hand touch line, it's spilt. <laughs> Cardiff will run it from deep and they'll go all the way across the pitch. Not necessarily forward. But wide. Threading the ball through, and the assistant referee, on the far side, judges them to have stepped into touch. Gordons will get a uh, a line out. And that comes down in favour of the uh, men in green. Is it there go, Blue? It's up now. No, no, yeah, it's a pass back. It's fine. Scrappy on the floor. <laughs> Referee judges that actually it's Gordons who've uh, impinged. Cardiff come on this right hand side, a bit of space, puts his ears back and. Heads towards that touchline, the ball is spilt. Gordon's come away with it. Neat little offload once again. Referee playing advantage, but Gordon's will go on the right hand side. Ball poked over the top. That's caused quite a lot of uh, laughter from the Gordon's bench. I think it's like an unorthodox front rower having a stab from the boot is uh, always a cause for comedy. I think they call it a funt, don't they? <laughs> Gordons, who have looked as though they are in the ascendancy in this game, certainly played uh, the slightly better rugby. Cardiff, to be fair to them, have dealt with what Gordons have thrown at them. But really, Gordons will be uh, unhappy not, not, not to get a score of some sort in this game. The referee is going to be called back to a little bit of afters. Two players having uh, words and verbals with each other. eventually brings them back to uh, the side of the pitch where they were. It was green the scrum, I think. It's always interesting when we have these Welsh sides coming over to these sort of tournaments because they're such unknown entities. Right. Obviously, play each other Five. throughout the course of uh, the majority of the season and uh, don't have too many games against... Uh, opposition across the border so it means that we don't really have too many sides to sort of uh, mediate them against uh, which uh, causes for some quite interesting clashes. Gordons have gone left and they will find a little bit of space and the two men who were arguing a few moments earlier up against each other now Gordons have got it they've got a strike from here got to make it work the shadow of the posts 
Gordon's push through and over. They're excited about it, held but the up. referee says held up. Surely, sir, came the cry. Kick for the touchline isn't great. And Gordon's come forward again. A little stop start. They'll go right. There are numbers here. If they can make them work, this is another opportunity. Ball has been spilt. Gordon's almost tempting fate. Forward again. Offload doesn't come to the floor. Left again. Almost there previously. A little nudge through there, knowing that the advantage was coming. High tackle, says the referee. We're into the red, and I think a, a score just before half time would be very useful. It might also Ref just be a man down. Yeah, referee's uh, had enough of uh, Cardiff and Vale. <laughs> Numbers advantage in the 15s game is good. In a game of 10s, even better. Here go Gordons to the line and they do score. And uh, that is uh, the least that they could have hoped for in this game. Uh, in this first half where they've had so much of possession. They do eventually get over the line. I think that will be half time. Gordons getting the ascendancy. It's so incredibly d difficult to defend for such a long period of time. Cardiff and Vale done ever so well. To, to try and keep them out, but they were shooting themselves in the foot with those sort of silly penalties, high tackle, not retreating, means that, well, they're going to be down a man for an extra sort of 90 seconds the, the other side of uh, half-time as well. So uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to sort of fault Gordons at the moment, and, uh, well, I think Cardiff and Vale are going to have a lot of questions to answer heading into the second period. Yeah, they'll be against the wind in the second half as well. And uh, Gordons will be happy with their uh, their first half, uh, even though it is just the one score that puts them in the uh, in the lead. With We're back underway. Cardiff to receive the ball. They're maybe just getting used to this, and away they travel down the right hand touch line. And they will uh, get the penalty as well. Much better. They'll uh, try and keep the ball alive. Running very flat at the moment, Cardiff means that any momentum they're going to try and create will have to be out of potential individual brilliance rather than necessarily off any structure. It just means that Gordons can sort of fly up like that and take the game line and really suck the life out of any Cardiff and Vale attack. Maybe a bit of space down this right-hand side. Breaks back inside. They'll come again, the ball. 
tantalisingly poked over the uh, head of the centre. That's a bit more like it. Gas from the uh, scrum-hatted number 13, and he's round on the outside. That's a bit more like it for Cardiff. He just uh, hitch-kicked his way into uh, into try-scoring form there. Well, uh, on very much on the back foot after that loose pass, but it was uh, collected well in Gordon's. Well, it just didn't really capitalise. They stayed very passive and just allowed for Cardiff and Vale to sort of show Gordon's what they have and well what they did have was a, a real moment of spark on that outside edge the the space was always there and they're just holding off slightly and allowing for Cardiff and Vale to burst through and well, they paid the ultimate price it's five points and now we're all level two good fans as well both those scores then coming against the wind a lovely kickoff. It was a really good kickoff, hanging brilliantly in the uh, in the air, and all of a sudden, Gordon's the aggression there for all to see. Tumbles his way into the 22. Cardiff and Vale lying uh, across the ball. Referee having a word. Good tackle, but they'll come back. Shows what importance there is towards a good kicking game, especially in this format. It means that. You can really get the front foot with toe pokes like that. Not ones like that, though. All uh, a little bit uh, too firm. Yeah, someone like um, Josh Bellamy last year showing uh, exactly what the kicking game can do for you and, and springing uh, so much of, uh, of the Trinity game off his boot. Well, we'll see his sign in action. Uh, next up on pitch one but without Bellamy no burn no Pert Smith means that um, it's very much wide open this festival as is this break uh, Cardiff and Vale all thunder their way into the 22 then with the, when he was looking for the offload the ball bounced out of his grasp and Gordons are back in their own 22 all of a sudden Go back for the uh, the scrub. Gordon's will get the uh, the put in. I think a referee with fingerless gloves is. Uh, a sight to behold. There's a new one on you, is it? I, 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 I don't, don't think I've seen too many of those. As he means business. Soda Gordon's bursting through tackles. Good strength. Garner and Vale making a nuisance themselves on the floor there. Referee hasn't really seen it. The uh, tackler hanging onto the ball. Really have been allowed to do that. Cardiff and Vale have made. A nuisance to themselves there as well. Good tackles coming in from Gordon's. Again. Again, Cardiff just very flat in their attack means that those offloads are being forced and the ball being spilt. Gordon's, the offload works because it misses everyone. It's fine, it's fine. Back, eventually, yeah, not not happy with uh, it all on the floor, knocked on. And uh, the men in green will get the put in. The strike, one of these sides has uh, got to nick this. Game uh, poised at one try, unconverted try each. It might just come with a little bit of individual brilliance. I don't think either side is sort of structurally capable and at the moment to sort of spark anything so it might it might just be that little bit of individual magic that can take this game by the scruff of its neck they go left there's a little nudge through has worked well in previous games Cardiff and Vale go back and get hold of the ball 
offload is good as well and there's a little bit of space on that right hand touch line tackles come in and tries to get back to his feet knock on potentially no referee says not rolling away <laughs> hang on they've gone the referee is going to bring them back because he wasn't watching he was arguing with uh, two players <coughs> Again, hands made free. The offload is easier. Counter ruck from Gordon's. Looks as though he came from the side. Referee agrees with me. Cardiff and Vale being brought back. Again, handing very flat. Gordon Zewell just to slow down the tackle there it means that they can set themselves up nicely in defence and well, match up the numbers but Cardiff still managed to try and create some sort of deceit but then again look it's just Gordon's over the ball it was that slowing down the previous breakdown that just meant that they could match up those numbers and end up getting an advantage getting a little a bit niggly there's a few scraps happening in and around the uh, the ball you've punches being thrown not connecting but um, you know it's no uh, there's no love lost between uh, these two sides you probably have never met each other before it is uh, it is quite a scrappy game Two minutes is the call from the referee. Two minutes to try and win this game. I wonder, with the wind, whether they're going to try and no, go for corner. No, it's uh, on the short side. That's a good decision. Hands. Offload. Good man on the inside if they can use him. Tap tackle doesn't come. And Gordons are in underneath the post and that little bit of magic that we hoped for has arrived. Exactly there it is. It's a very good decision to go back down the short side. Cardiff and Vale were, were certainly not prepared for that. A uh, slightly caught napping here and well, just picking off those numbers and keeping the ball in hand very well. It was the... They go one way then the other, don't they? Just that tiredness from Cardiff and Vale are trying to sort of estimate where and predict where Gordons were going to go rather than playing what's in front of them, which meant that the gap was on the, the short side and just did well to keep the ball in hand until absolutely necessary and unleash the number 19 to potentially wrap up this game. It's going to be a Cardiff and Vell line out, I think. So it could be one last chance potentially for the Welsh team to claw their way back. The kick, or the try, was unconverted by our records. Um, I'm pretty sure it did go over, though. So, so it could end up just being a search of consolation rather than necessarily a search for the win. <laughs> Penalty given Gordon's, yeah, pretty much could be it. Gordon's can just hold this game out. 
and the short side again they go. The numbers are there and it's the same duo that set up that second score on hand again, this time not clicking. Knock on, that might be it. It is. That is yeah, that's it. <coughs> Gordon's uh, prevail. 12-5, the final score, Cardiff and Vale. Not quite uh, strong enough. And uh, Gordon's will, uh, will be happy with that win. Next on this pitch, uh, Trinity come visiting. But uh, Gordon's will uh, will traipse in a little uh, a happier of the two. 12-5, the final score. away here on Oval One and it's uh, Trinity versus Marlborough. Referee involved as well. He's, uh, already Marlborough trying to aim for some front football. It's uh, bumbling around, well kept as well. Strong challenges in the midfield. This uh, Trinity pack is um, Certainly heavyweight. That intercept is sniped and away goes Goldschmidt. Blistering pace and wherewithal to touch down. Samson Goldschmidt. Eager to impress and impress he does. Excellent first score from Trinity. Almost out of nothing. Marlborough slightly forcing things in the opening few seconds of this game. Means that Trinity can add the first scores of the game. I'm a bit surprised we don't see more of that sort of that sort of play um, in, in this format of the game. There's a, there's a huge amount at the moment of a pretty static sideways work, and if you can read it, just like Goldschmidt did there, um, 
you can uh, you can pick off passes quite well and uh, Trinity very quickly into their stride in this game. Sam Medcalf back on the way and not ten. As we mentioned in a, a previous stream, Trinity without Byrne, Bellamy, Friday, Pert Smith. A lot of their sort of star players that would necessarily be associated with the baby blue and white, but they're all unavailable, which means that a few players who potentially are caught on the fringes of this Trinity side are getting the opportunity to thrive. And it does mean that not necessarily the Trinity that we usually connote with being a dominant force within the schoolboys scene at the moment. Still got a, a couple of key players, Matalav, Matalavu wearing uh, eight will be a uh, force for them today. Kick not finding touch from Nixon and penalty given Marlborough away this time. That's not gone uh, into touch and it's going to go dead. Scrum's called. This would be a big punch up. Nixon just waiting to de deliver the ball. Front row, Bampo, Butler, Fleury, Asanbe also could be involved. Goldschmidt, the try scorer at Nixon, and it's a perfect line cut. Matabalavu just couldn't keep hold of the ball long enough. Quite sure what happened to him then, why he dropped the ball whether he was thinking about the offload too quickly. Oh, Brett. Settings up as a big shot that comes in there. Everyone trying to dive all over it. Apara was the man with the big hits in the middle and certainly making himself welcome. It's the drop from Matabalov. I think just bomb with it slightly, hits his thigh as he's coming up and just dislodges the ball without any necessary pressure. We were talking about it earlier, positional play. Matabalov, he normally a in the 15s game, a back rower occupying the centre spot at the moment. More than happy to uh, run in open spaces. Very dynamic player, and this sort of game fits well into his style of play. Sweeney carrying, but to no avail. There's a penalty that Nixon's going to go back for, and there's Joe Marvin. Again, another front rower who could potentially be utilised in slightly looser positions today. And um, we could go out here to Sweeney. It will. He can stretch his legs. He's got a lot of them to stretch. Goldschmied onto a para. Referee's whistle blows once more, and I think he's getting slightly fed up of continuing to do so. Again, offside. Nixon assesses his options, decides that the short side is the best ploy, and Bampo just bustling his way through. Shot on Freddie Webb's out. Nixon ponders to release so Goldschmied will deputise at nine for a moment or two as Marvin 
Marlborough deliberately staying out of the rucks at the moment just to ensure they've got all the numbers possible to try and defend this Trinity attack. Needing it right now. Trinity, though, down a man. They've got Matabalav, who's just receiving some treatment currently. Still not stopping them from making headway up towards the 22 as Webzel. Nixon and Bampo, Goldschmied out the back, Apara, heavy tackle on him. Not often that Isaiah Apara is bumped back that far. Bampo countering that hit. Nixon going for a bit more of a scrap than a tackle. Trinity now have had the ball for a significant period of time, but not necessarily been able to utilize it that well. We go down the blind side, still keeping possession. This is impressive work from the current Schools Cup champions. Floated ball over the top and was some space out wide, but decided to play it safe and keep it within that 15 meter channel, Medcraft. Goldschmied as well. Just, this must be very tiring work for Marlborough, who have been defending for the majority of this first period. Nixon, this time in more of a midfield role, superb hands to keep that ball alive. Matabalavu, good strength to stay on his feet. Marlborough win the penalty and after all that from Trinity they must feel pretty deflated to come out with zero points on the board. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna act as a fillip towards Marlborough and the referee's gonna say another ten yards as well. Well they say that uh, games can't be won without the ball. You can certainly put a big dent in the opposition if you act like that and Marlborough will be happy with this. It's a little nudge through. How's it gonna sit up? He's gonna tiptoe into touch. Very well played from Marlborough. Good awareness. No one in the backfield for Trinity. Matabalavi is going to make way. I think he's uh, taken a shot that hasn't sat with him too well. Well taken at the top of the tree from Marlborough. Equally good drive, but good enough taken in and collapsed to their own accord. So it will be a Trinity put in at the scrum. A get out of jail card for Trinity who were caught on their own five. Decisions, decisions here for Trinity as well, because them of old would potentially look to run it out from this sort of position, but it looks like Medcraft is sat in the pocket, Goldschmied as well, out the back. So, interesting to see what they sort of want to create from this position. Nine minutes on the clock. So if Trinity can uh, see their way through to half time, they'll be very pleased. Finn Kennedy feeds. Um, is Medcraft now, who's going to get some real pace on it and just about clips into touch and that will take us into the half. Uh, it's been all Trinity so far in this fixture. They've uh, had the ascendancy and took a well-taken score through Goldschmied before we even really well and truly began. But Marlborough have held the fort down since then and managed to keep out the blue and whites heading into the break halftime score here. On pitch one, Trinity School five, Marlborough College nil.
Brunacy goes back underway. Uh, the boot of Finn Kennedy, and it's a perfectly poised restart. And Websell was trying to get on it, but instead it was good work on the ground from Ollie Bailey. Not good work with his hands that time round. Finnerty have got the put into this scrum. I thought it was a knock on. Too sure how that worked, but never mind. They've made a few changes at half time. I can uh, see that Ollie Bailey is on, uh, as well as uh, Omar Leon on the wing. He could be implemented here. No, it's Bailey who takes it up route one and does well to make sure that his side keep possession. There's Marvin who had a part to play in the first half. Kennedy in at nine, not his usual position, but working with it quite nicely. Flicks the ball up for Medcraft, who made that run just before the break. Wilcox was trying to defend that, and Marlborough trying to get some sort of attacking structure going, something they've failed to do in this first half. Can they try and keep some form of continuity? Balls there, no one using it. Flung out towards the backs, and a lot of grounds was lost in that pass, but penalty given, offside. Trinity just caught napping in defence and Ken passes loose and wayward. All gone backwards apparently. that has just sort of descended upon us. It's uh, pretty wet, raining necessarily, but just generally moist at the moment, which will make handling a little bit more difficult. Medcraft, though, is going to try and keep this one within his grasp and it was well worked from Trinity to try and find a bit of a gap in the Marlborough defence. Superb handling to get it away to Websell and Trinity now really playing with fire. In terms of those offloads, a lot of high risk, high reward stuff. There's the risk. Well, but they will be looking to sort of do something with possession now. They've uh, had a lot of chances to potentially try and progress, but none which they've taken fully. Through the middle. Just about held on to by his coattails. Brooke, the captain. Oh, just trickles out of play. Kennedy again with the put in. He goes down the blind side and he's found some space. Can he try and stretch his legs? He just found a foot in touch, I think. Referee, good positioning from him. No uh, assistant referee really to speak of, although he does arrive with his flag a little bit late. The referee had to be clever there and uh, get himself into position. And he did just that. See that offload and uh, it's Trinity ringing the uh, changes. Webzell and Apara off. Trying 
Liberty now still possession late on and Towards that line, I think they're over. No, not Sambo's held just short. Ball Trinity at the moment, the kick pass, how's that working? Kennedy and still held short. Lost a bit of ground, but gained an advantage. Bailey out wide, and it's gonna be an easy walk in there for Omar Leon in the corner. Trinity double their advantage. Well worked in the end, but Marlborough will be kicking themselves with the amount of chances they've now had to try and get themselves back into this game. It looks like Trinity may be able to just squeeze the life out of the rest of this match and see it off with a win. just looking as though they've got a little bit more awareness about themselves and a little bit more uh, speed of thought a little break around the uh, the short side a key example of just knowing where the space is and, and how to exploit it energy very very good at that Kennedy back with the restart now oh. Marlborough will look to try and get something out of this game late on. They're going to do it. They're going to have to do it pretty much now. Uh, just over two minutes left on the clock. Advantage. They've got another penalty to try and utilise. Again, just loose passes from Marlborough means that they're shooting themselves in the foot quite regularly. Trinity able to just soak up that. Uh, that play and, and turn the ball over. I would uh, I would be very interested to see this Trinity side up against uh, one of the sides we've already seen, like, someone like Ipswich or, or High Wycombe, slightly different uh, prospect. Very well could happen heading into the latter stages of the tournament in the afternoon. Trinity always coming in as favourites Obviously, won last year's inaugural competition. You see Bracken earlier. Well, how, how good were they? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't actually manage to catch an eye of them. So it'd be interesting. As I mentioned, those those Welsh sides are the real jokers. You can never really figure out what you're going to get from those teams. And a bit of football to accompany the rugby. Being hacked downfield. Marlborough now back in their own 22, but they do have some numbers here if they can use them. But again, just that handling, evading them. The simple skills which Trinity utilise so well are currently the downfall of the Marlborough side. Yeah, and back in their own 22 once more. And uh, up against this wind, it uh, will feel tricky. Uh, as you say, Will, they can only really have themselves to blame. It just hasn't gone to hand for Marlborough. Trinity, Kennedy. however. Goldschmied. Bookend this game with a try. No. It's not how it'll end. Very differently, but nevertheless, at the same scoreline. Trinity, a score. Goldschmied, and then one from Omar Leon in the corner. 
one for each half means that they coast past Marlborough with relative ease. Full-time school here on pitch one, Trinity School 10, Marlborough College nil. Return to play is the UK's leading sports medicine. Now, pitch one, Seaford, the hosts, Seaford College in the blue and white strip, playing Bishop Wordsworth in the uh, in the navy blue. They uh, have had the toss and they will uh, choose to play into the wind in the first half. Seaford, we saw them a little bit earlier, played well. Good opening victory for them. with uh, Arthur Chads at, uh, at scrum half, no doubt playing uh, Conduit again in this game. Try and join it all together. Alex Challoner as well. Famous dad, number 10, Alex Challoner for Seaford. So here we go then, Seaford Southern Tens. Thank you for joining us on the live stream. Next generation bringing you uh, top level schoolboy rugby. Ten aside version of the game, nine minutes each way. And uh, Seaford it is who uh, kick us off. And uh, <coughs> Bishop Wordsworth receive. Number 17, Joshua Joseph Patience for 
Wordsworth is the man who gets wrapped up and uh, referee says uh, penalty to Wordsworth and there's a little kick through. We will probably see a fair few more of these as the players get used to this idea of this tennis side game and this extra little bit of space which can be exposed by a kick through. Ball bounces into touch and uh, see if it'll get the, uh, the line out. Line well claimed. Down it comes. Seaford scoop it into their midfield. That far side. Finn West. Finn West making a little bit of a break. Ball comes back. Seaford. Big runners. Good tackles come in from Bishop Wordsworth. Slow it down slightly. Warren Smith, the first man up. Good tackle from him. Ball knocked on by Tom Dickin. Patience comes forward. And uh, the referee will come back for this knock on and a scrum to uh, Bishop Wordsworth. Puts the ball in. A lot of pressure put on that set piece. Smiles for the Seaford uh, five. Rather obviously, five and five is the split in tennis side rugby. Five in the forwards, five in the back. Seaford in the ascendancy at scrum time. Bishop Wordsworth are going to have to work really hard to uh, make that uh, theirs. Kick to the touchline is a good one. Up to halfway. Quick take, potentially. Seaford saying maybe. Hamish Williams uh, thought about it. Slinging it back in field. Leaves it for his forwards. Line out again. Neatly done from Seaford. This is Chad's working incredibly hard, bursting through every conceivable gap. Pocket rocket is Arthur Chads and key part of this Seaford team. Referee saying uh, not releasing. Kick down the uh, short side. Not much to play with uh, for uh, the vice captain Oscar Hayward. Another line out for uh, Seaford. Again, it works for the uh, men in the white and blue hoops. A uh, good rolling ball. Ball at the back, safe. They go a little bit further. Referee allows them to do so. Bishop Wordsworth coming to try and make a nuisance of themselves. The referee's arm now comes out. And that's in at the side. See if it'll kick this to the corner. And they try and exert a little bit more pressure on their foes.
Got to really make this count, though. <coughs> Seaford, brilliant position. Wind with them. Ascendancy at line-out time. Everything is pointing towards five points here. Let's see what Bishop Wordsworth can say about it. Line-out completed. Down they come. Bodies in position. Wordsworth have done well to get in the way there. Seaford trying to make it work from scrappy ball. Now they go, now they lurch, and they are there. Seaford do eventually cross the line. And it's their big man, Harry Bostock, Quinn's Academy under 17 man. Having a little word with the referee afterwards, but uh, I think we're good. The uh, extra couple of points is uh, not successful from Haywood. Have another look at it here. It was uh, not great ball that they had to work with, and eventually Bostock. Uh, Picks it up and goes himself and extricates himself from the tackle and lurches his way over the line. And uh, as I mentioned, Seaford able to convert that uh, territory and field position into points, crucially for them. Looking like uh, going well in their, their home tournament. This is the second time this tournament has been played and Seaford doing a good job. <whistles> Knocked on there though. as we have seen in the games played on this pitch so far. A huge amount of ascendancy with the team going from left to right. The uh, wind is sweeping down the pitch and making it a little bit more difficult. Wordsworth come away with the ball. Tackles come in from Seaford and they're good ones. Hugh Bate, the vice captain with 15 on his back, trying to make a, a little bit of an inroad. Now it's fired out all the way out here to Gothard. Gothard is stripped by Williams. Williams plays the ball back. And away comes Finn West again. Finn West's mazy running, causing all sorts of difficulties for Bishop Wordsworth. There's the try scorer, Bostock. He means business. Seaford. Chads. Takes the ball to the line and uses big runners. Chads again. Ball looks as though it's gone forward. And he, the referee agrees with me. Referee gives uh, Bishop Last Wordsworth the, uh, the option. Half time is almost upon us, says the referee. Yeah. And Bishop Wordsworth will uh, ask for the oranges. It is half time. Seaford in front, Bishop Wordsworth just about hanging on. And um, they'll go for a bit of a chat, a uh, bit of a reassess. And uh, and with the win next half, Bishop Wordsworth will hope that their fortunes will change. Seaford College with their noses in front.
Well, this could prove a very interesting half of rugby for uh, Chads and his men from Seaford College as they attempt to uh, try and hold back the wind and Bishop Wordsworth as they come forward. Seaford uh, one try up. But this is a very different matter. Brilliantly taken on the run by Hammond and he just got dislodged at the last moment. His eyes firmly on the ball, did a fantastic job to take it and then actually lost it after that. Liam Boyle, seven on his back for Seaford. Marches his way through the Bishop Wordsworth defence. Seaford again. Referee says the advantage is over. Seaford come forward again. Try score a Bostock is involved, but Wordsworth have got it. And they are out of touch on this near side. Referee now asking for assistance from uh, one of the players. Needs him to carry a flag and pretend uh, that he's uh, going to run the line. Dickin. The uh, line out, which has worked well so far. Bostock down with the ball. Goes backwards, referee says play on. Man lying in the way, but the referee has actually seen the infringement the other way. Bishop Wordsworth will get a go with it. And referee says uh, 10 more yards for kicking the ball away. Liam Boyle rather uh, tempestuously frustrated with the call. Means that uh, they are deep in their own 22. And this is where Bishop Wordsworth found themselves as well. Most of that first half was played in this 22 metre line. Wind has uh, continued to get up throughout this uh, morning's play of rugby. And Isaac Osman is going to try and hit his man at the top of this line out. He does. Callum comes down with it into the midfield. Bishop Wordsworth come, bit of space, lovely almost offload I say from Hammond, doesn't quite work and the referee's going to bring them back for a knock on. Seaford are going to get the ball back. Away comes Chads, and into touch he goes. Interesting uh, next seven minutes or so that we have in front of us for Seaford. Bishop Wordsworth will oh, not throw out, not thrown in straight to the line out. I was about to say that they will really try and put pressure on the Seaford line. Seaford will get away to uh, to come out of their own 22 from here. Ascendancy there allows Chads to run at the uh, Bishop Wordsworth back line. He has help from his friends, and away goes Finn West once more. Finn West with the fend, trying to get rid of people, trying to have help from his friends. 
Seaford, the offload, unnecessarily perhaps. Chance is there to clear up. Bostock, I think it is, is trying to climb through. Kick over the top. This could work if it sits up in the wind. No, Bishop Wordsworth are going to come away with it. Dylan Hansen wearing six on his back finds his teammate. And this is the danger for Seaford. Almost pressing too hard. Makes them vulnerable at the back. Henry Fell. Bishop Wordsworth continuing to press. Back into the 22 they go. The referee's whistle comes to Seaford's rescue. Chads again. Away from the first defender. Now he tries to find West, and West is going to let that roll into touch. Ben Wordley asks for a scrum. Edmonds uh, has a little chat with him. This is going to be uh, interesting if Wordsworth can carve one through. Get over. Of course, the, uh, the conversion Coach. could mean the difference here. Mind. Set. Scrum has been Seaford so far this game. Quick ball. Chads is onto it in a flash, and all of a sudden it's broken the other way, and Seaford get the ball into the right pair of hands because Ethan Davis isn't quite the motor that they need. Chads does get it back. Sideways they come. Offload, knocked on. Won't quite work for Seaford. Exciting stuff, though. Chads wants more, the catalyst. Arthur Chads wearing nine on his back. You can see why the uh, the lambs like him. He is uh, an absolute live wire. Has a lot of people working off him. Sort of almost trademark Danny Kerr style sideways move to start with. Allows runners to, to work off him. Of course, he uses them often as a dummy. And Seaford have got one against the head. And Seaford could make this work. Referee asking everyone to get back. Seymour thinks about the quick one. Decides against it. Chads will play conduit. And will almost get there, will he? They will. Seaford with the second score and probably the crucial score. Conversion as well is quickly added. Eventually, all of that uh, pressure told. Harry Foster, big man wearing number four on his back, uh, had to rearrange himself once he'd hit the deck. Presence of mind to put the ball down. Former winger, apparently. Harry Foster, there he is. The big lad. Would have found his way previously to the uh, the try line well. But Seaford's uh, key second score is going to make the difference there, you think. Callum comes down with it for Bishop Wordsworth, and, and they're going to kick it deep with this wind. They're going to try and hope for a bit of territory. Seaford's number 13 is their vice captain Hayward, and Hayward is doing a party piece of his own down the left hand touch line. And he does find the man on the inside, Dan Seymour. And Seymour scores, and that could be crucial for Seaford. Not many, many games this morning are going to be three score affairs. And with so many good teams here, a little bit of extra. Points on the board could mean the difference. Seymour, the scorer. Hayward, the creator. 
And Hayward's conversion isn't any good, but the referee says it doesn't matter. Seaford with three tries, and a good three tries. The final one here created a little bit of a, a cameo by Oscar Hayward. Big fans down the narrow side, had to pick his time, had to wait. Pass inside to his partner Seymour. And Seaford with their third try. And a fist on the ball to show just how much it meant. And it's a good win. Good win for the home side, we'll call it. The hosts of this tournament, Seaford College 17, Bishop Wordsworth School nil. Full-time score. We will have a break. We will have some interviews on the way, some news and views from here. Uh, but all the uh, crucial uh, semi-final and cup matches, uh, the final matches coming your way. Stay with us. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a break. Uh, but interviews on the way from the people down here on the ground. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home of School Rugby. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, that's a great tackle! Oh, it's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? Well, where did he come from? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home of School Rugby. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, that's a great tackle! Oh, it's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? Well, where did he come from? How did that happen? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50.
Welcome back to pitch one. We've got uh, Marlborough versus Hurstford Point here. We're slightly off schedule, so uh, if you are tucking into your lunch, then uh, I can only apologise. But some more rugby to enjoy as you dip into your meal. And that, in a way, is delicious. Marlborough from the off. A well taken score out wide. Cook fails to convert. Doesn't matter though. Still five points to the good with uh, barely a minute played. Two balls on the pitch. Don't need that. Send one back. Brooke, back underway. Goes very long and is attempted out, to be kept kick. in. It's gone straight out though, so free kick awarded. That's for point. Travel down that blind side. Play on, says the referee. Backwards. Um. We don't have a house for point team sheet to my knowledge. Uh, have a look if uh, we can find one. But for now, we're running blind. You're off your feet, get out. Penalty given. No, Hurst travelling into the 22. Dummy and taken. Good challenge there from Josh Uma, wearing 10. There he is, Uma. He's uh, one of the quickest blokes around, London Irish Academy boy. See if he might be able to get a chance to stretch his legs if Marlborough gets something going here. Advantage was over and then, just as it was, they knocked it on. Through uh, bets there. Kick to Hurst for point and use a good bit of structure to line themselves up. Tackle! Short side, go the men in red and white. And it's straight through. I think that's. Uh, Charlie Manger, play on, play on, play on. Injured in the process, whoever it was. No, no, play on. Still going, a Hurstford point. Flag was partially raised, but it was dismissed by the referee. Keeping the ball alive very well at the moment. Play on, Rick. Ball's play been on, ripped. Play on. play on, play on, play on, play on. Consistent calls. No, no. Marlborough have ball now. They also have the penalty. Wilson brought down and Brooke tries to get the ball away. Knock on. Not a knock on, I'm afraid. It was uh, straight into the referee. Halfway through the first half. Um, 
All fed in by Kirk. Back out the other way in Brooke. Strong work from Robinson, who's battered his way through, and he's going to have the legs to finish it off, is he? No, he isn't. Well wrapped up in the tackle. Good man, yeah, play on. Play on, says the referee. Right, it's a good counter, and Hurst with point maker. Tackle. Good out of a bad situation, only momentarily, though. Ball is out, yeah, he's playing it. <laughs> no, you're offside 12, you're in front of the ball. Ball was out, which made everyone offside within the ruck. So, half the point managed to stay out of trouble for now. And can they go on their counter attack? Tackle. Try and build something from their own 22. They have a player down, there's and on the floor at the back of your picture. Way they break as the point still going, trying to get the ball off of the floor. Picking off the numbers on the outside. Yeah, sorry. Time off. For oh, that said injury. Water's being ushered off. Okay, just hold the ball, yeah, just wait a sec. Make sure you're 10, Hurst. Hurst, 10. Line out. Okay, time back on. Marlborough. Scrum just before half time. Crouch. Cook Set. once again to feed. Loose ball out from Wilson. Finds Brook in the middle. Ball. No, it doesn't. That's uh, his counterpart, Betts. Scrum called. That's the point. Caught people up in the mall. All unplayable by the referee. Trying to get something out of this game just before the half ceases. Ball out. In touch. 
Last play of the half. Very scrappy one at that. Been a very stop start, few injuries, knock ons. This is obviously every, these teams third and final group stage game. Uh, I might be feeling the effects of that somewhat. And Marlborough though, with the chance to try and get something out of it just before the break. No, they don't. We'll head in with a five point deficit. As mentioned, an incredibly scrappy and stop-start affair between these two sides, but they're still very much both in it. Half-time score here on pitch one. Marlborough College five, first point College nil. That restart potentially summing up our first half. Just uh, a little bit off the mark. Hope for a slightly better second period for both sides. Heading into uh, the lunch break as well. I'm sure on the minds of a fair few players out there. The possibility of food on the way. The nudge over the top from Brook. Straight through from Sheldon. Guys, just play on, yeah? Looping ball. Over the top. Marlborough. It looks to go back the other way. There's numbers there. And the kick potentially not the right option. Off the head, says the referee. Game is uh, wild. Point. Can they get themselves out of this predicament? Do they go up towards the 22? That's a good carry. Sets them in a nice platform now. Good line speed from Marlborough, though. Can it be exploited? Back the other way. Go Hersper Point. 
creeping up towards halfway. Still a lot of work to do, but Marlborough counter well. The counter then countered illegally, though. Penalty. Which uh, Brooke will take into the corner. On the 22, please, Hurst. First on the 22, you're outside. Who's your nine, Marlborough? Nine. Three. Marlborough with the line out. That was nice. They form a strong wedge, which is driving forward. This is a... Uh, Industrial work. County advantage. That was fairly obvious that Hurstwood Point entered that mall illegally and they can try and play it out through the backs here. And Hines keeps the ball alive. Wilson caught with about seven Hurstwood Point players in front of him and none of his mates alongside. Brooks floated ball. Numbers on the outside here and they'll go through Hobson. Scores Marlborough's second, doubles their advantage. Hobson yeah, will attempt to slot his own conversion. Doesn't get it, but got the try instead. This was how it came. It's floated ball over the top, catching everyone out, and then the slick hands from Betts to release Hobson on the straightened line. 10 0 means that Hurstwood Point will have to score two if they want to get themselves back into this match. Good kickoff. Comes off at Hurstburg Point knee and straight back into the hands of Marlborough players. That one handed offload. Rare sight in these sort of conditions. Makes it all the more impressive. Powell through the gap. Ease's lovely hands now from Marlborough. Seems to be cooking with gas. Bulldozing through. Up towards the 22. Howell again. Sheldon. Try scorer. Owls. Hobson. Can he get the offload away? Yes, he can. Later on towards Wilson. He's going to try and go straight through. Budgate's somewhat open now for Marlborough as Hurst for point. Start to tire. Green slides over. Marlborough take full control of this game. The big unit green flops over the whitewash. 15 point lead. There will be no catching them. Now with only three minutes left to spare. Hobson as well will take his time with this conversion, try and get it right. Just off the bar. Here it was, Green is sliding through, evading tackles, slipping off of players and Diving over there, it's well worked from Marlborough. Gets his well-deserved rest after that excellent carry. 15-0, 15 minutes played. We've got the advantage as well now, Marlborough, who've collected the ball once again off restart. Uma. Marlborough 
sausage over for the knock on. Straight through. Marva still going offload. Superb. Scored their fourth. Turning into somewhat of an embarrassment. They've really just gone up a few gears in the last few minutes. Catching the ball off restart on two occasions. Hobson with the easiest kick of the game. This time makes no mistake. Thought that potentially the move had broken down here, but they just keep the ball alive nicely. Straight through the middle. Hurst for point looking tired and ragged in defense. You can't blame them. They've been on the back foot for pretty much the whole of this game and softer shoulders becoming even softer. The game wears on. Hurst for point now just looking for consolation schools and to save themselves from humiliation. 30 seconds left on our clock. Referee may be seeing something slightly different. Either way, not enough time for Hurstburg Point to make an impact on this fixture. Arbor have caught the ball again, and Uma is going to be able to stretch his legs for the first time this afternoon, and it's almost too easy for him. Roshuma just canters in. Didn't really get out of fourth there. It seemed like he was running in slow motion. Cook, and it will be Cook to take this conversion. Will he slot it? Not that it matters. No, he won't. There we go. Final score. It's a 27 0 win for Marlborough. Very convincing indeed. Uma almost in a pedestrian manner just sort of says, Oh, can I have this? Yeah, OK, thanks. And just sort of strolls through all too easy. Hurst for point left on their knees. Taking us into the lunchtime break for good this time, I promise. You can go and collect all your food and beverages and come back to us with some knockout rugby awaiting. That concludes the group stage of the convincing win for Marlborough. Full-time scorer on pitch one. Hurstford Point College nil. Marlborough College 27. Introducing Next Gen 15. The new home, School Rugby. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, that's great tackle! It's not good enough! One, two, super few with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? Really good. All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15. <laughs>
So you join us here at Oval One. I'm alongside Pete Richards. We're about to start the Cup semi-final. Seaford Ipswich on Oval One here and Trinity Epsom College over on Oval Two. It's been an absolutely amazing day, hasn't it? Like just some quality rugby. Well, credit to the to the boys, especially because the weather's been tough. Uh, but the, the rugby's been great. Really like the, uh, the tennis side uh, format. Um, and for a lot of people that haven't played rugby at school since about the 10th of December, it's a great uh, introduction back into the to the shortened format of the game. Certainly is. Now, we've not got a lot of time before the teams get going, but we really want to talk to you about some of the stuff that return to play are doing. I mean, your role, I suppose, as a company in the, in the, in the game is, is more important than it's ever been, really, such as the focus on injuries and, and head injuries in particular, and the, the work you guys are doing is so important. Uh, we, we, we believe so. Um, we've got a team of... Over 40 doctors now working for return to play, managing head injuries. Uh, we've just done a bit of an audit on our 2022 stats, and it's uh, yeah, we're hopefully doing some good work. We're up to nearly 3,000 concussions that we looked after, uh, predominantly in, in schoolboy sport or school sport, um, across about 6,500 appointments. So <laughs> the doctors have been busy. Um, it's, it's, it's an area that needs what we believe specialist attention specialist and um, we've got a, a team of real top sports medicine doctors that uh, enables schools and, and predominantly pupils or most importantly pupils 
to manage those head injuries effectively so that they're back in sport or back into school at the right time. Um, and uh, look, coming from a, a background in sport, you know, it, we, we're trying to work from the bottom down, right, to look after to look after kids and getting them into into a good habit of managing head injuries. Inevitably, they happen not just in in rugby, but in but in all sports and in all school environments. Um, and we're there to look after them. Absolutely, and I suppose as much as anything, it's about instilling that confidence in parents and in the schools themselves and in the systems that are in place that. Yes, these things happen, but yes, we can help and yes, we can try and mitigate as much as we can. That's it. I think the, the, the mitigating risk is, it, risk is incredibly mitigated when, when managed correctly. And um, yeah, it is about educating mums and dads and players as well to see the big picture and not just seeing the, the fixture they might miss next, next week, but actually uh, enabling them to recover effectively and um, at the right time. And uh, things are changing massively in this space. We just had this, this piece around the RFU and uh, concussion laws or, or tackle laws and uh, how that might affect head injuries in the future. Um, but like, like I said, we are, our, our predominant aim is to offer great care to, to, to children in this specialised field. Right, well, that is us done and dusted here because we are underway back on the pitches again. And I'm about to hand you over to the terrible, brilliant duo, the Robertses. Well, we're straight into the action here on pitch one. Um, it's really well and truly crunch time now. Semi-finals underway and going to provide some extreme forms of entertainment. Already it's worked out relatively nicely for Ipswich who are trying to get themselves underway. Seaford managed to diminish it fairly early on. I watched uh, Seaford play their final uh, game in the group stages. They looked uh, more and more competent. The, uh, the man in the middle basically running the show is Arthur Chads and he's got his hands on the ball at the moment and he definitely will play a part if Seaford are going to progress towards this final. It will we'll need to watch him very, very closely. Far side, both in. Space, please. Let's have a gap. Crouch! Chad's uh, with the put into this. Uh, Guys, we're all it's not going to work. The Referee's going to uh, ask them to reset. Okay, sort it out. Otherwise, I will. Crouch. Find. Set. Hold now. Hold. Ipswich asked to hold the shove as Chads feeds the ball out and it's going to be cleared by Challoner all the way back. And this be worked and ordered around. Strong work in the contact from Tremaine. Back the other way towards Eduardo Todaro, the Italian stallion, as he's called in Ipswich. <laughs> To my, not not my words, <laughs> Lucas Nisbet Hadaway. <laughs> I did think we'd get Italian Stallion into the commentary today. Strong carry there as well from Tom Dye, who's uh, unmistakable with that big mop of blonde hair. He was the one who uh, fumbled it. Contact. Right, to keep this gap, fellas, don't have to keep resetting. The man at first receiver is just walking behind, um, I think it's West, Crouch. wearing 22 on his back, is Hayward, the, uh, the vice captain, wearing Set. 13 on his back. He's the man that most things have gone through. And hold now. Chandler. He gets the ball back. Chance, in fact, my bodies. Has gone backwards, but it looks like a strong vice over the ball. And away he goes, and it's Hanaway, die, and Saddleton looks to break away. Saddleton still going. Ollie Saddleton straight through the gap. The Saint centre <laughs> soars his way through. 
Yeah, well, look at the replay on this. You, you have to say the tackling a little bit lacking as far as Seaford are concerned. They both went high on him. He's a big chap and you can't really do that. He uh, forced his way through as if uh, after a, a thirsty pint at the bar, nothing was going to stop him. Both, I think Bostock it is who, mm. who goes high with, uh, with the winger, Williams. Just those, those early hands from Ipswich there were a, a crucial factor. Uh, getting the ball out wide early, which is uh, crucial in sevens and uh, arguably underappreciated in tens. But back and away through Hollis. Advantage to Seaford. They will get the scrum. This Ipswich side will be fancying their chances now. They've had a... a been all inside the Seaford half so far. We haven't had to look to our left too often in this first half. I look over to the left, I see Jacob Ford, very animated. Jacob Ford, Crouch. younger brother of Joe and George. Five. Overseeing Six. this Ipswich side. Move, move. Haywood with the carry. It's Bostock. Williams. Chad's long ball out. Haywood, the vice captain. Dickin. Tackle. Liam Boyle has to work hard to secure the ball back for Seaford. Going very laterally at the moment, and Ipswich are given the chance to pounce at the breakdown. Could see a penalty go their way very soon in that area. Ryan Bourne is certainly sniffing. Tackle blue! Release. Go Seaford's way. Hayward's boot will uh, look for the touchline. He gets there. The Seaford side, coached by uh, Sean Thompson, formerly of Hampton, been down here now for about 18 months or so, is a uh, second uh, Seaford Southern Tens, and he seems as though he's been able to get a good hold on this side and, and produce some, some strong players. We saw a presentation for, for Johnny Green uh, at sort of the lunch break. He's here back at his old club, or back at his old school, in fact, uh, now sort of excelling within the Welsh under-20 setup. Uh, he'll be playing over the next few weeks. So they're starting to produce some superstars here in, uh, in Seaford. Hollis and... Good work out wide. Dimitriev will try to keep the ball in field and it was hacked on by Hollis and Seaford have collected it now. Release blue. Seaford again into the midfield. <laughs> Ipswich doing very well at stopping them and getting their hands on the ball. Ryan Bourne, as I mentioned, it looked as though it was coming for a fair few phases now. He'd been over it like a hawk in some cases and now we've given a good platform for McMahon to try and get on it. Chads has responded. Deja vu. Razor Lynn on the charge. Famous mother. And here comes Seaford into the 22. Ipswich over the ball trying to make it difficult. Lynn into Bostock. Again, Ipswich trying to uh, disrupt. Off feet, Blue! Just catching themselves off the f off their feet at the breakdown. Move. Super pick. Great hands from Hayward. Managing to catch that ball. Lovely well with all to keep the ball alive there. Chad's again to the floor this time. 
gets the ball back. Seaford uh, within 10 metres. Stumbled as he picked it up. There we go again. More quick ball. Tackle. See if we can work with this. No, no, no. Tackle. No hands. Advantage offside. Got the advantage now. Seaford. Playing in front of their uh, their home Push. crowd. Edging their way advantage towards this right. line. Chad's looking for a gap, another little stab through, which is spilt. Coming Williams, I think, reached for it. Hamish Williams, just a little bit keen on it, but the referee will come back and say that they can go again. Chad's will go again, same thing. Chad's lurches for the line, plays the ball back. They go left-hand side, Williams is still out here, can he make amends? Still on advantage, White. Pick and go, referee saying there's free money. Arm oh, still out from the referee. Release! Clock deep in the red as well. You'd imagine this would be the last play of the half. <laughs> and they are over. Crucial score for Seaford in this cup semi-final. And Hayward will have a chance at, uh, at adding the extra couple. Half time. Doesn't do so, so Ipswich lead. Here it was, just that patience in play from Seaford. It's uh, ill-discipline that cost Ipswich and Good work to just try and find that outside edge and power over. Still, that two-point deficit separating the two teams at the moment. Seaford will look to come back with a vengeance in this second period, but at the moment, the hosts are down to Ipswich, five to seven. Sean Thompson and Jacob Ford getting their words in to well-versed and knowledgeable characters within the schoolboy rugby scene. They will have an impact on how this second half goes and changes for Ipswich and Seaford alike. Both have rotated on the bench to bring a different dimension to this second half. Hollis, ball in hand. Saints fly half, gets us back underway. Big fans from Oscar Hayward, he keeps coming. And then he finds a little bit more of a gap. Shapes to get rid of the ball. Base it. Chad's fighting his way through the gap. Guys, gonna come with this one. Tackle roll, please. Tackle roll, sideways. Ryan Bourne is certainly causing havoc at the breakdown for better or for worse for his Ipswich side at, at points. He's uh, getting to pretty much every ruck and slowing every ball down. Ball not finding touch and Hollis manages to collect it and passes it on to Todaro and 
Here's Billy Reed, and we know the sort of spark that he has, but it is certainly put out by Seaford, who go quickly. Too much on the kick, possibly, from Chads. It's going to tiptoe its way over the line. Good awareness. And you mentioned it in, in games previously we've done well. The, the kick is going to unlock a few teams in this uh, in this set setup. And just the right weight on it could make the difference. Because of the the way that you can have to play, it means that you pretty much do have to number up uh, in the front line of defence. It means that a lot of a lot of teams are either playing with a nine as a half sweeper or no sweeper at all. So that back line is um, pretty bare and has been utilised heavily uh, by both sides and could be utilised again here as Todaro steps on the gas. And it's just to swing the ball back in field. There's that little stab through. Oh, well picked up as well. Rory Hollis is a uh, very comfortable ball in hand and ball on the boot. Uh, lost possession there. Seaford have got it back. Chads gets things going. Bostock attempts to offload. Good strength from the uh, second row. And now Williams with a little bit of space combining. On out wide if they can use it here, but it's slowed down again. Hollis, though, with his hands on the floor. Ryan Bourne not too far away either. Haywood a little bit conservative with his kick. Seaford with Chads. Chads unleashing himself, extricating himself from the grappling arms. Seaford again. Hadaway with the tackle. Dickin. Working hard again to get to the floor. Bostock trying to step away from his tackler. Chads looks one way, then the other. Half a gap. Kept in line. And eventually it's knocked on. Or a run of substitutions, another couple exchange themselves for Ipswich. Constantly rotating. In blue. Yeah, Left mark then. Seaford nine. Remember, you can't go past the middle. You can't go past the middle. Crouch. Bide. Set. Francis offside nine. Ball is away for Ipswich. And they will attempt to try and get themselves out of uh, their own 22 by running the ball. Referee says uh, it's a switch ball. There's no advantage now anymore. They've uh, made the uh, the time and the space. <laughs> Clear out too late. Seaford get the ball back. Fraser Line, the uh, captain, pointing, offering uh, Haywood the uh, the touch line. Make it a good kick. A lovely nudge. Well, it's too, deep. too, too good. deep. It is too deep. The it's wind just took it. I think it was absolutely perfect when it left his boot. Really, really fine margins. He exploited there. 
Now with three minutes to go, Ipswich do have a prime chance to get a good foothold to Daro. Saddleton with that little hitch kick and step away and it's got an explosive turn of pace and just to utilize Tadaro again. Dimitriev was offering himself, but it didn't end up in his hands. Instead, the ball's recycled nicely. Saddleton, it's knocked on. Another scrum. It looks like it potentially could, could just be the team that makes the least amount of errors heading into these closing stages that ends up winning this fixture. Well, you'd have to say Seaford uh, are now entering the, uh, the time zone where you, they have to do something. They have to convert possession into points. Relatively good field position. Crouch. They have to keep the ball and they have to make their way up pitch. Well, this will help. Chads will like this opportunity in which to try and express himself against this back line and he is tackled and does not let go of the ball and that's easy stuff for Ipswich to play with absolute textbook tackle from Eduardo Todaro there he really managed to grab straight at the legs and and cut him down instantly so much so that Chaz didn't even realize he'd got tackled it was excellent work and now Ipswich with a bit of front foot. Paul Dimitriev taking it on the charge. Die offloading. Ipswich with momentum now. Nisbet Hadaway comes in to clear. This way, this way, this way. Five, 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 five. Blue five. Just be careful. I appreciate the players on the floor. Just be careful with Dom Craigie is uh, just being warned to roll away. So. Victor Tocca is just going to wait his turn, use his fellow Italian Todaro, who just hitch kicks out the way, offloads it superbly. There was space out there for Saddleton, but it was taken instead by Majors. They're almost the way to the line. Todaro from the base, Saddleton, Nisbet Hanoi on a hard line. Forward Too hard. Pass. Forward pass. This for Hadaway tonight, another try off the back of a forward pass. And chat back from Saddleton has meant that Seaford get even better. They got a penalty. Well, the referee about 30 seconds ago said there was a minute left. So isn't a huge amount of time. The kick has to be a good one. And it is a good one. Bounces towards us. And Seaford with one last roll of the dice. Blue on the edge. I reckon the next time this ball goes dead, that is the game. Last play, Phillips. Last play, confirmed there by the referee. Oh, I've got one thing right today. Dick in with an important throw. Collected ah. just about. Oh, no. that's knock on, and that's it. Hosts bow out as Ipswich tire them down. Relentless work, especially in that second half to deny Ipswich, to deny Seaford any chance of getting back into the game. It was a, an early score from Saddleton and... Uh, and then a, a score just before half time from Seaford to make things interesting. The difference is a Rory Hollis conversion. Full time score here. Ipswich head into the final, beating Seaford College five points to seven. Okay, the next one of matches.
So, plate semi-final time. Both these teams will feel relatively aggrieved to not be competing in the in the big one, but silverware, silverware, and they're both going to go for it. It is Christ College Brecon in the green and gold versus Felsted in the primary red. Already, it's Cotterell who scored a brace in their game against Dulwich, has got them on the front foot. Uh, alongside me for this one, I've got Andy Marshall from uh, Return to Play. Andy, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Yeah, very well. Bit, bit nippy, but, you know, hiding in this next-gen um, new number that you've got. Exactly, um, our, our, our little shelter to, to keep us away from Mother Nature, and at the moment is, is proving quite nice. Uh, but the conditions certainly testing out there, as demonstrated by Felster, who dropped the ball as a... Audacious pass is thrown, and we were just talking about conditions. That's arguably the pass that you wouldn't throw in this sort of weather. Yeah, I've watched that. It's Gethin O'Callaghan, the 12 for Christ College. Mm -hmm. He's got lovely hands, and he's a, he's a big centre. He's made. A, he scored a few tries today. I saw him score earlier against Ipswich, but he does love a long pass. So I think Felstead will be looking for it. Well, they had the advantage, so I think they just decided to roll the dice a little bit. Yeah, fair play, they've got some quick players out wide. Uh, I've seen, seen them a couple of times so far today. If they can keep the ball, they could win this game. But um, yeah, a few missed tackles is, is the reason they've been they've lost a couple. There is O'Callaghan and it goes out the back door. Uh, Jack Perrins who took that one on. O'Callaghan again getting himself involved. That's lovely to seat on the hands towards Holden. Playing conduit still. Goes O'Callaghan and down the line they go. That's stupendous work, but foot out in touch from Reese Conker. Means that Felsted will uh, get the line out, but that was a lovely bit of interplay there from Christ College. You, you wouldn't be able to tell that they've already played about 60 minutes of rugby so far yeah, today. They don't look knackered, do they? They look, they look a bit bunch of boys. One to watch out for is the number four, Harry Holden. Mm -hmm. scored, scored a brace earlier today and he's definitely got some wheels for a second row. They're getting more athletic by the day, I think, these forwards. Um, Baxter, who was in at 10, and Hamish Irvine out wide. He usually finds himself in the 13 shirt uh, at 15 level. Baxter out the back door, Smith. By Green. He's uh, tackled and stripped, and now Callahan thumps it back and says, There, deal with that, Cotterell. <laughs> deal with it, he does. Straight through like a hot knife to butter. Goes Cotterell. <laughs> Penalty given though, left relatively isolated. Uh, Christ College Brecon wasting absolutely no time as they steam through now. Important tackle there made by Joe Hendler. Joe Reese needs to shift the ball and he does just that. Breaking through, Anton gets the tackle on. Double shot there from John Taylor Anton, which just completely halted what was a really progressive uh, Christ College attack. Well, they're doing well keeping the ball, aren't they? First have had barely any ball, and, and when they have, they've made a few, few too many errors. Um, but with this wind and this slight slope, you expect Felstead to, to try and get ahead early in this in this first half. And they have to try and kick on if they want to make sure that they can get a foothold in this game in this first half where they have the uh, conditions of the game with them. John Taylor Anton this time 
with a big shove. He's been put in the front row for a lot of today, despite playing 12 for the majority of his time at school. Has that gone forward? Yeah, we thought it would have, but the referee just making sure he's going to play the full advantage. Again, as you mentioned, and he Felstead with some promising glimpses, but just not managing to work anything past sort of third, fourth phase. Yeah, too many mistakes. They've got to keep it a bit, keep it a bit more simple, I think. Phase play. You're not, gonna, you're not always going to score first phase, are you? You need to, you need to set them up. It's a very young Felstead squad, oh. a little uh, sick, the few under oh. 16s as well. So this is potentially a side with a, a lot of ambition and excitement, not necessarily too much experience or game management, which when you get into a sort of semi-final setting is absolutely paramount to sort of keep. And six exhibited well through Tom Voss Davies and it's well picked up there as well by Dan Buffrey. He's held up by Baxter and Irvine and they got the ball away. They've got it illegally though. Knees were on the floor, they had to get rid of it. A lot of rugby being played in this middle third, showing just how tight these two tight these two sides are. <whistles> Penalty goes the other way. The Arguably been one of the more even affairs that we've seen throughout uh, the course of the day. We get into those sort of latter stages. These <laughs> these games will get tighter and tighter. Those uh, 27 nils and whatnot become a thing of the past. Very few, few line breaks so far in this game, haven't there? It's been, it's been quite a physical, physical battle, and no one's breaking that line yet. And then, and then too many errors. But I'm sure we're going to see see a bit more from both sides. No Monty Cooper, ball in hand. It's been spilt both ways that time. Lots of knock-ons. Scrum goes the way of the Welsh. Finalists last year, weren't they, Christ College? They were against Trinity, who will be finalists again. They will play Ipswich in the uh, in the cup final on this pitch in a in the not too distant future. But uh, it's the case with these Welsh sides that come over for these sort of competitions. The fact that they well, they just play each other for the majority of the winter, so we don't really get to see them as much on the big stage. And when they come over here, they're uh, well, unannounced forces which uh, can provide these sort of performances as they try to break way through Holden and Reese can't keep a hold of it. Just unlucky, just potentially forcing it again, but those half breaks are starting to become full breaks. He's a danger man, that Harry Holden. You saw him in a bit of space there and then with the, with the, with the good pass out of the tackle. Um, but if we can see him a bit more of him on the ball, uh, there'll be tries in this game. But at the moment, we're still at deadlock with a uh, couple of minutes left of this first half. Scrum's been collapsed. Referee not happy with what he's seen. He lost uh, of a rerun. Crouch! Set. Good shove from Felsted. Taylor Anton goes out the back towards Baxter. Hamish Irvine with a little bit of real estate in front of him. He gets to stretch his legs. Baxter again. The tap now from O'Callaghan. Everybody holds their breath a second as the referee plays advantage. Irvine straight through, he's got Taylor Anton on the inside. Taylor Anton will coast home. <laughs> Felsted from their own half, create some magic and the boys from Essex ease through. Great try that, great skills from, from Hamish. I remember seeing him in the tournament last year, he's been around for a little while. Uh, what, what, posi what position is he? Is he a full back? Or full back a, yeah. or outside centre. He's uh, utilised well within the Felstead ranks. He's, yeah, as you mentioned, an experienced player. And uh, I think this is the sort of format in which he thrives. And he just finds that half gap and that explosive pace. And good support line from Taylor Anton. Those centres combining well. 
two seasoned veterans within the school circuit, if there ever is such a player. Um, but either way, they've done ever so well to give Felster the lead they heading need, into the break. They needed that, didn't they, just yeah. before the break with, with the wind. As we said, the wind and the slope, they needed a bit of a lead at half-time. Um, it's a great, great time to get it. Lucas Smith with the restart. It's really, really hanging. Too much so. Uh, this could see us into the half. Quick tap from Fenno Donovan. He tries to break through the line. Good speed of ball from Bracken and got some handling here. So Callahan. He decides that it's better to go inside than out. Time not on their side. They can't afford to be bundled into touch. Nick House again just tapping away at this red wall brick by brick skirmy house again gets the out the back door offload and buffy down the outside and it's an instant response from christ college Really got a game on our hands, haven't we, Andy? Yeah, that was a great try. That really enjoyed it. Some slick handling from Christ College Brecon, and I think they probably deserved that. This, this half has, um, has been, yeah, it's been a, a very fair and 50-50 game, and I think it probably should go in about tied at half time. All depends on this kick. Slightly harder angle than the Felsted one, and go shy. So we have a two-point game here at the break. This is how this try was created. Taken in by Skirm, the, the, the young centre. He seems a real leader in the squad. I've really seen him giving it to the boys when, when they've been beh stuck behind the post, having conceded or, or, um, or pre game he's, he's a real leader amongst the, the men. Nick House providing that space for Dan Buffy to, to reduce the deficit between these two sides. But in this preview to the England Wales that we may be seeing in a few weeks time at the moment at the break it's Felsted School 7 Christ College Brecon 5 Not the best of kickoffs that Reese. Onwards and upwards. Back, 
19 green offside. Is it the kick to the corner there, debating him? Yeah, can you hear us? Oh. Yeah, sorry. Um, I just realised that we, we had the wrong mics. on it ever so close as he got that ball down and a few technical issues with our sounds apologies if you didn't catch us for the start of this half but uh, I think we've got it all resolved now Kicking this if I was Christ College. Might want to get this down in just want to get end. it out of jail. Callahan goes for the stab over the top, and Irvine has to be clever with it. Crossing. It's a harsh penalty, that doesn't it? Mm. Either way, the Welsh boys can try and kick Back on. Off Red! Back off Red! No hands at the run! Yes. Big fend and. Christ College uh, bustling up towards halfway. Oh, Callahan thinks about going blind, goes against it, and Holden. Callahan once again plays nine. That little stab in behind, and it's going to be a foot race here. Taylor Anton's herring after it. Just oh, about keeps wonderful. it within his grasp. He's oh, under extreme he's pressure. He's done well there, hasn't he, to get back and recover that. Really has. He would have heard the Christ College players breathing down his neck. And Will Baxter's going to try and repay the favour here with a stamp down the blind side. Garino, has he got the ball? Oh, another harsh call, I feel. Not Another penalty. Not much more that the Monaconian could have really done there. Now, Christ College with more time on the ball. Similar to the first half. Holden. Straight down route one. Release! Do they go? Sniping. Perrins. He's close. Knocked on as part of the tackle. We'll have the advantage though. Can we not have the advantage? Oh. Not we are not supporting either team here. It's just I think the ref's being a little bit too whistle happy, maybe. Well, he's uh, given Christ College an ultimate chance now to capitalise. A scrum right on the five, just offsetted by the post. So. It could go either way here. Probably O'Callaghan's dream at the moment. He'll have plans and plays whirring in his brain as he assesses the Felstead defence in front. I think they look like they're going to go right here. Can't pick and go from the base as well. That's a key factor in this tens format. A big long pass, one of, one of O'Callaghan's biggies off his left. He's looking at the 14 and the 11, the 11 outside. Powell, Powells and Skirmy all outside of him now. Can yeah, there go. also. Felsted complete their changes. Crouch, find, set. No, no. Callahan instead just decides to go on his own and thinks that's the safest option for now. Scurry back the other way. There's Perrins. And that's an O'Donovan, in fact. 
Pearson goes digging, finds Powell. He's close. No advantage coming. They're keen for the ball. Powell. Lloyd Powell out to Callahan. Good hands, and there's numbers out here if they can use it. Need quick ball. Into the corner they go. They'll get there. Liam Powell. Good link play that. Nice, nice from the Use the hands. Don't you didn't need to do anything flash there, just simple things and in the corner. Simple things done very well. I mean that Christ College now have a three point lead with this conversion pending. We've got a player down. Um may give us a good chance, Andy, to talk about why you're here and uh, and return to play. And in these sort of situations, that's when sort of your your team can work best. Let's just talk about sort of how return to play work within the school system and why it's so important that they do. So we've actually brought a doctor, a doctor here with us today, um, working with the, the Felsted physio team um, to cover things like this. And um, they'll, he'll be seen by the, by the physio team and, and put onto the doctor if needed. Um, but yeah, we're doing a huge amount with, with, with lots of schools now all over the UK. Um, we yeah we've got schools up in Scotland we've done, done done really well in the in the market down in London the southeast and we're we're trying to get a few more northern and west country schools on board at the moment um, but yeah it's all about uh, managing the risks and and, and in injury management effectively and obviously concussions being a huge topic not only in the last week but um, yeah it's sort of it's sort of been hanging around the game a long time rugby is grabbed concussion and made it its own but it's actually happening across all sports mm -hmm. um, uh, and yeah it's happening a lot within within schools and, and we're just trying to give players um, the best care possible um, with, with excellent doctors who have a huge knowledge around head injuries with schoolboy rugby being, being such a, a finite opportunity for a lot of these boys you only sort of get two years or so to to shine and uh, can really be make or break for for a lot of careers and for a lot of ambitions so making sure that players are as fit and able for as long as possible is in their best interests and of course in the best interest of of those coaching and, and looking after them as well so uh, the scene as they return to play do very well to ensure that players are out there for as long as possible and and enjoying their rugby which is something that is a uh, perfectly exhibited in these sort of tournaments. The second C for 10s uh, uh, competition that we've had. We had last year uh, Trinity came here, won it all. Could be going back to do that again. Have you have you had a look at Trinity this year? Yeah, Trinity, their normal physical selves. <laughs> um, tough, tough bunch of boys. I know they're missing a few key men today, as are, as are many of the schools here, but um, their defence is a hallmark of their game and um, and their physicality, they're, they're just excellent. They're, I think they're a very, very well coached team. Um, it seems as, it seems as though we, they sort of grab the headlines with Bellamy, Byrne, Friday, Will Pert Smith, these guys who are flashy and attacking and, and create these uh, sort of great attacking opportunities. But as you say there, Andy, it, it is their defence that, that, that wins them these sort of competitions. And, well, it's a. Uh, it, it, they will be a formidable force to, to take on Ipswich uh, later on as uh, Skirmy uh, thankfully makes his way off the pitch in uh, relatively good condition. Just while we're discussing the final there, well, do you think, um, what have you seen of Ipswich today? They impressive outfit? I, I, I am really impressed by them. They too were also missing a, a fair few players. Harry Simpson, Mark van der Veen. These sort of players who would be staples within their 10 circuit, but still, they're still managing to uh, to create some some really good opportunities. Uh, very similar to to Trinity in a lovely blend of attacking flair and and big sort of brute physicality. So uh, that is certainly not one to miss, even for a neutral um, to to tune into the final later on. Uh, Belstead though still have a score to settle with Christ College Brecon here go through Baxter <laughs> penalty Felsted that could prove telling Cottrell 
offload and it's Cannon if he can get the ball away. Yes, he can. Felston need to stay patient. More been called. Felster will be keen to get to ground soon enough. They do just that. Is the ball there? No, it isn't. Suffocated by Bracken. Now they just have to close the game out in the dying seconds. Yeah, Christ College Brecon, we just heard, are looking for a, for a final. Uh, the, win the winners of this game will play Marlborough in the final of the plate, I believe. Marlborough just beaten Gordons. Um, yeah, scrum on the halfway here for, for Christ College Brecon, and they just need to see the game out, out now. This is a massive scrum for Felsted. Big shoves. Callahan, who's been ever present and still managing to stay in touch well through Owls and now it's Powell he goes straight through the middle looks as though there's a lot of green shirts available and ready and waiting and that very well could be it for Felsted and just going to have to see this game out now, Christ College. Need a turnover very, very quickly to Felsted here, and they've got to go the length if they want to win this game. An uphill climb made all the steeper by O'Callaghan. Has he got there? Yes, he has. A little bit of miscommunication. I think Andrew Le Chevalier, the Felsted head coach, confirming that he didn't go into touch. Sure he's been a standout player for me today, that Gethin O'Callaghan. Mm. Um, he's been physical, he's got great hands and, and time on the ball. He's got a bit of class about him. <laughs> he provides the, uh, the icing on the Welsh cake. Eccles cake. Manages to get the conversion with it as well. Last play. So we will have a restart. But uh, that conversion has uh, all but diminished any chances that Felsted will be able to push this game any further than it already has gone. Nudge put in. Collected. Not enough. Doesn't matter. Well, the Welsh victorious Felsted. Although they took the early lead, since then it had all been Christ College Brecon who just ate away at that score line and left the boys of Essex empty handed. Yeah, it was all about that first half for me. Felsted needed more with that with that wind. Um, and, and didn't quite get enough. It went, it went, we went in almost, it was at 7-5 at half time and mm -hmm. Felsted needed more in that first half to, to, to battle up the slope and they just, just didn't have it in them, sadly. Well, it will be Christ College Brecon versus Marlborough for the plate that will be streamed. I'm pretty sure over on pitch two, things are ever are changing here in Seaford. But what we do know for sure is that we have some excellent, superb schoolboy rugby still coming up here. Don't go anywhere. Final score at the moment on pitch one, Felsted School 7, Christ College Brecon 17.
16 becomes two. We have a final on our hands. Ipswich versus Trinity, who have been there, done that. Two relatively new boys within the schoolboy scene. Who's your money on? The winner. Oh, I thought you were going to give us an answer then. <laughs> I will go, I think, Ipswich. Okay, I, don't, I don't know why. Because Trinity are a great side, mm. I think Ipswich. I think. I, 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 I think that's the hipsters' vote. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> that's, I've always been a hipster. <laughs> I'm so glad you've identified it. Um, yeah, I'll go for Trinity then. Uh, well, either way, we certainly got an absolute cracker of a fixture. These two teams, not necessarily at full strength, but it, they don't have to be to create some superb rugby. Ryan Bourne, and already here's Eduardo Todaro and. Scoop back inside, picked up well. Tackle now, tackle move, get on side. Todaro, down the blind, still going. Off the foot, off the foot, play on. Referee says play on. Ipswich are going to try and create something here. Hollis and Nisbet had away. It's gone behind <laughs> Tom. Dom Craigie, and it's a knock-on, so it'll be Trinity Ball. Slight bit of panic and potentially some fatigue setting in now as these players play their fifth game of the day. Do you know why I think it will be Ipswich? Because they weren't meant to be in the tournament and they've come in late and they're going to surprise everyone. And they haven't played as many matches as Trinity. Yeah, it's true. Set. They could, they could very well do that with the departure of Halebury late on. They uh, haven't had as many games, so it would be slightly fresher to Daro with that stab in behind. He's been ever present for Ipswich so far, and oh, that shot on uh, nonchalant, wasn't it? On Sam Medcraft, battered into touch, and Don Craigie is gonna try and throw this line out. We've got a little stop as uh, some cramp has ensued. Yeah, I think this is going to be a case of who manages their, their tiredness the best. Ipswich have done a really good job today of throwing lots of different people on, giving lots of people different amounts of game time. At some, at some stage, it seemed like a, 
uh, a, a really you know sort of fast revolving door that uh, Jacob Ford had bringing loads of people on and there's Isaiah Apara Trinity have the advantage and they're set off with it now. Here's Oli Bailey. Excellent tap tackle there from Todaro. He's saving Ipswich's blushes for now. Matabalavu into the contact. Medcraft away through Kane Fleury as well. Back down the short side they go. Medcraft just holds up play against his numbered equivalent Tadaro who's racing away with the ball will he have the legs and no the compliments replayed Matabalavu this time gets to the fleeing Italian what speed from Matabalavu to make up there now, deceitfully wearing number eight you could arguably put him in a 13 or sort of shirt and he's impressed okay. to the same ability Ken Fleury showing his turn of pace Side entry. Side entry though from Omar Leon. Not your penalty, Ali Bailey. Hold your horses. Victor Tocker, I think, is going to weigh up his options. Well, the Italian, a little bit earlier in the midfield for Ipswich, making. Uh, Things very, very difficult. Matabalavu with the tackle, but I've been very impressed with the man. I think he's. I think he might be making his way off on the far side. Is he? Or yeah, is he Dorado Todaro is making way. It looks like um, Billy Reed is is in as well as Rory Hollis. So they've. Uh, oh, pass over the top. What a waste from Ellis Tremaine. Wide, but they have that spark in. Uh, in Billy Reed, who could provide something a little bit special. Um, hey, Billy Reed with impressive feet earlier on in the tournament. Certainly will be looking to use them if he gets the opportunity. Bampo to feed this line out. Goes all the way over to Wilkie. Bailey and Medcraft and there's Matapalavu again, just twisting and turning. Rory Hollis finds himself over the ball, not usually in that sort of position. Bailey, he's got Omar Leon alongside him, wrapped up well. Medcraft in the pocket, steps back the other way. Lots of Trinity shirts in very small spaces. Leon passes forwards. Penalty though for offside. Ipswich not helping themselves with this ill-discipline. Yeah, you got to um, you got to be careful as far as a build-up of penalties is concerned. Territory, obviously, in such a short period of uh, of play, nine minutes, unless the finals are a little bit longer. It's uh, you got to be careful. Finn Kennedy kicks to the corner. Matabalavu, day is done for now. Nixon on in his place, so over, gone for all speed out wide. So let's see how that changes their approach to this line out. Almost a good line out, knocked down brilliantly and then knocked on. And uh, Ipswich will get an opportunity here. This was clever. Down it came, but just mishandled. Uh, and Kennedy doesn't usually find himself at nine, so you can appreciate that he may not be intact with the same amount of nuances as a Lucas Friday would be, for example. Hollis, flat pass from Saddleton. Now that will release Billy Reed, who's got a bit of space to work with. Does well. Saddleton now over the ball. Hollis again at 10. He's fluttered between the halfback roles, both for Ipswich and Northampton in his uh, injury ridden season so far. Reed. Hollis again. Over to Nisbet Hadaway. Offloads the ball. Lovely work from him towards Ellis Tremaine. 
Hollis, flat pass. Ryan Bourne won't be thanking him for that. Head injury as well, I think. Uh, we've got to be careful here. Completely uh, legitimate hit, but he was stooped so low that a lot of that came through his uh, through his head, and we may have a brain injury here that we need to be careful with. It was a flat ball from Hollis, which was heading straight for Ryan Bourne. Could have sent it in a postcard. Trinity knew exactly where that ball was going and could line up a shot. Yeah, it's um, it's nip and tuck here. As potentially we predicted, both sides uh, with a couple of opportunities in which to give their back lines a go. Uh, but it would be very, very fascinating. Um, nil nil could be a score at the end of uh, a full time if you're a betting person. Well, all the rugby at the moment is being played in that middle third. There's uh, been very few visits to either 22, so both teams are uh, cancelling each other out as we speak. I think Ryan Bourne's going to have to come off, uh, understandably, of course. And uh, that means that we've got Jimmy Holcroft on, I think, in the blue scrum cap, wearing 18. He You're is. right. Yeah. His brother Connor uh, on the bench, uh, wearing 11. Ouch. He's been, uh, he's also donning the scrum cap. He's been Set. in and out of uh, this side. No doubt we'll see them both in tandem soon. Hollis. Flat ball over towards Good Tremaine. Pass. Lovely pass, and it set up this perfect opportunity for Alice Tremaine. Pass allowed the player to run onto it. I, I mean, I mean, it looks simple, but the speed with which the player was able to receive that ball meant all of the work was almost done. Really good score from Ipswich. Well, the seed planted by Hollis. Tremaine watering it down nicely, and, well... Ipswich have a nice flower growing. That's uh, cool as you like from Rory Hollis. Almost showing off straight down the middle from the touchline and hits the crossbar to match. Have a look at this pass. And, and what I'm talking about here, at speed, the pass is absolutely inviting the run onto it. And that's why he can hit the outside arc at the speed that he can. And it makes it so difficult for the defender because the speed is so, so fast. Rory Hollis is uh, the difference at the moment between these two sides. Take His pass and white. subsequent conversion setting up a superb try. Ipswich in the lead against the current holders of this title. Oh, this is Grubber right. that time not working out as nicely and it's picked up by Joe Marvin. Bampo, can he get a hand free? Bampo, he can get a leg free. Still going, pass all the way back though and Nixon's gonna have to get his dustpan and brush out. Bailey steps back inside into a half gap left by Dmitriev. Trinity being held at the moment. Can they burst forth? Teddy Wilkie and Apara and good hands to set up Joe Marvin. He was called there, Danny Myers. He was told that he couldn't get a hand on it, but didn't stop the Dutchman. A little delay, I think, as uh, another player needs um, a hand up. Isaiah Apara. Just tentatively making his way off the pitch, it looks like. Uh, Freddie Webzell rejoins. Kennedy heads towards touch. Oh, that's a lovely touch finder, which sets them up a perfect platform with which to counter. It's a really good kick. It's a brave kick in the uh, in the situation. You get it wrong and everyone's staring at you. But that is going to give David Bampo and his mates the perfect position from which to strike. 
safe. Make sure you leave the gap. Oh, he's got to get his throw right. He's had a few go a bit awry in this game. Can he get this one on the money? In and set, please, Trinity. We're deep into the red. Come on, guys, hurry up. Bampo. It's a good throw all the way over, though. And it's collected, and now Salton can break here. Ipswich trying to race from their own 22. They're getting away now. The stamp put in behind. Medcraft can't pick it up. Collected by Todaro out the back. Into touch, though. And that calls for the half. Oh, well, an electrifying end to what has been a very tense affair here. Ipswich with a seven-point lead. Trinity, though, knocking on the door till they have splinters in their knuckles. Half-time score here on pitch one. Ipswich School 7, Trinity School 0. Back for the second half, and uh, Ipswich, who have the lead, uh, will kick off to Daro, who's been uh, conjuring bits of Italian magic throughout the uh, throughout the day, is uh, going to get us back underway. We were talking earlier about Italian under-20 rugby, under-18 rugby as well. Certainly oh going to be in for a shout within that uh, Italy under 26 Nations squad. Now, having a look at getting involved there. What a shot that is from Tom Dyke. Uh, when you get the hair like that, you've got to hit like that. Really good, strong hit. Making an impression early on in this first half. That's what Ipswich need to do. It's going to be all about defence for this second half with Ipswich having a, a lead. And for Trinity, they're going to have to go back to their attacking routes without some of their key attacking cogs in Bellamy, Byrne, Friday, all unavailable. They're going to have to do it without those of which have helped them with attacking flair so far this campaign. There's a Sante and... They've still got the ball here through Medcraft, who's really stretching his legs, and Medcraft's going to get all the way there. Crucially as well, underneath the sticks. Sam Medcroft glides over and we're arguably probably going to be back to an all-square game. We are brilliant score, brilliant response, as you would expect from Trinity. My eye was taken by the injury, actually, that happened on the halfway. Looks like a very nasty knee injury. Lucky, well, happy to see that he's actually up on his feet and hobbling away. He didn't look in... Uh, in uh, in a good way, but that is a crucial score for Trinity, exactly what they would have talked about at half time. Now, this there's the injury there, which wasn't very nice, but look at the way that they 
uh, just bide their time down this left-hand touchline. And then they're in. And crucially, in underneath the post. Ipswich into the wind for this second half. Got it all to do. There is the try scorer, Sam Medcraft, who's uh, created that score. Finn Kennedy, crucially, with the conversion. Seven apiece. Can't separate them. Saddleton and Reed just deciding who's going to collect that one. There's Todaro. Flat ball over the top and the try scorer. Still going. Todaro, pace to spare. That's Seemed a high a tackle. Oh, Lucas Nisbet had away, was fingertips away from trying to get to that one. Yeah, Nisbet had away. Has had an ever such an unlucky day. He's had two uh, two tries scratched off. Tadaro is playing so well. I think that looks a little high. I'm not I'm not 100 sure whether or not that should be allowed. But there we go. Yeah, I I I I think uh, Ipswich are right to be relatively aggrieved that they're coming out with a defensive scrum here. Crouch. Five. Finn Kennedy will feed it. Ball out nicely. Bailey. Bit of smoke and screen. Medcraft just decides to straighten up right into Saddleton. Kennedy, little chip over the top. Advantage, I think, was there. Time off. A high tackle that they're uh, going to be penalised for. I'm not percent sure whether the referee was happy with what was said to him afterwards. I'm not sure. Either way, Kennedy is going to get this chance to kick to touch. Not as ambitious as his previous one just before the break, but... Medcraft is, uh, is warming up, isn't he, into this final. He's uh, scored one try and it's looking dangerous, even from 40, 50, 60 yards out. Certainly looking threatening. Ollie Butler is on, so uh, their uh, more orthodox hooker will feed in here. Bampo retires to become a, a lifter. Ollie Butler started in the third 15 last year and has made his way through the teams. There's a redemption story for you. Kennedy, show and go, sends everyone to the shops. And in that coveted Trinity 10 shirt that seems to be doused in magic, Finn Kennedy takes a trick out of Bellamy's book and finds something where there didn't seem to be anything at all. Yeah, the simplest of moves sometimes. Ipswich so aware of how they needed to get out to cover the outside. Kennedy with the uh, most outrageous of dummies. Sold everyone. Ardi Sarveyor-esque, you've got to say. <laughs> Almost. Not quite heavenward like Sarveyor, but have a look at it again now as it bounces down to him. Line out, uncontested, through they come. And then just a huge dummy opens up the door and through he steps, untouched, and Ipswich all of a sudden to 14 points down. Seven point gap with three minutes left to play means that we're going to end on a grandstand finish. That's a lovely kick from Kennedy to get us back on the way. It means that it's competitive for Trinity, but it was spilt and Toka back to Todaro, just steps and evades players like it's nobody's business. No Todaro looks an absolute quality player, really does. The two 15s for either side at the moment have, uh, have been the star players, both Medcraft and Todaro have really created some fine pieces of skill. Rory Hollis is back on to try and see out this game. 
in the nine chat. Yes, please, let's go, Trinity. Crouch! Behind! Set! Hollis. Tucker. Tadaro, in fact, dude, was utilising that 10 roll and icing on the cake could come in the form of Ollie Wilcox. Quickest player in the squad over 100 metres and, well, he needed every little bit of that pace to seal the deal here for Trinity, who have come from seven points behind to put themselves well and truly in the driving seat heading into the final stages of this fixture. Yeah, Southern 10 seems to be Trinity's bag at the moment. Last couple of years, uh, they found themselves uh, on top and uh, this final looks like it's going to go the way. Kennedy of, slots of the school and it's um, it, it's opportunist in a sense. Uh, we're calling his uh, just how brilliant it was to Daro, but just trying to force the offload, trying to force the opportunity because they're up against it behind Ipswich and Trinity knew that and they knew they just had to sit and wait, wait for the mistake and capitalise. Hollis's pass unleashed Tremaine in the first half to score that crucial try for Ripswich, on, switch, but his pass there potentially sealing on, Trinity's on, fate as champions. Still though, 30 seconds left on the clock. Bampo, superb dexterity to get the ball away there. This could work out superbly for Trinity. Strong tackle though from Lucas Nisbet Hadaway gets a cheer from the Welsh Christ College players who are in front of us just enjoying the rugby at the moment. It's like they're on a panto. Tackle move! Ipswich uh, almost having to ride out this storm. Really coming hard and fast in this last few minutes from uh, Trinity. Nixon heads to the corner. This was it from uh, Asan Bay. Let's go. Little pop up and could have gone to hand. Didn't. Nevertheless, we're in the red now. This is uh, Trinity's Cup, the ribbons, bright blue. Just a matter of formality to finish off this game. Told you. You did. You did. Uh, I picked the wrong team. <laughs> Uh, and uh, young Will has uh, won that battle and, and I probably owe him something on the way back home. There we go. Well, this competition has been going for two years and, uh, well, Trinity has snapped up both trophies. Is the ref going to call it? We will no. have a scrum. No word of final play either, so our clocks may be running a little bit fast. Ten seconds, Ten seconds left, so yeah. Crouch! Unless Five! Usain Bolt turns up Set! in Ipswich <laughs> colours, I think <coughs> that could be curtains. Well, that might be the 10 seconds up there, just That's that reset. Yeah. Three. Three but still, Ipswich will look for a... Crouch! Consolation score. Fine. Set. Certainly uh, up and comers within the school scene. This is not the last time that we will see Ipswich in these sort of finals. I'll tell you that for free. Saddleton stretching his legs. Away he goes. Tries to find Billy Reed. Doesn't. Tremaine it was, but he knocked it on. Trinity. It almost seems routine. They pick up the C for 10s trophy in fine fashion. 
What a good day. What a what a fantastic day of schoolboy rugby. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And uh, Trinity, yeah, do win, but everyone's played their part. I mean, you could say the difference between the, 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 the plate winners and the cup winners today was marginal, really marginal. The Bracken boys played their part. Uh, excellent work. Really, really good day of schoolboy rugby. Yes, Trinity win it, but I think everyone needs to be a little bit proud of themselves for bringing their uh, their stuff to uh, to bear today. Really, really good day of schoolboy rugby. Just been told, Roma Matabalavu has been awarded with the Player of the Tournament. Josh Bellamy last year, another up-and-coming star within the Trinity ranks. Matabalavu takes the prize. It could have been any of those in your picture there. They're proud, they're on fire, and they're not looking like they're going to slow down anytime soon. Final score here in the cup final of the Seaford Southern Tens tournament, Ipswich School 7, Trinity School 21. And so, at the end of a breezy but fun day here at Seaford College at the Seaford Tens, it's Trinity that are the champions. Will you talk us through that final? They're just irrepressible, aren't they? Mm, they really are. I think it's a, a real sign of a, a real winning team. I mean, you can you can see sort of shades of a, a Saracens esque sort of Leinster esque sort of performance. These sort of teams that despite being down at half time can just pick themselves back up and not just win but win convincingly like this score from sam medcraft who has been superb all day set that sort of trend off and once they started scoring well they couldn't really stop they certainly can and i mean i don't want to hark on about who's not here but this is a trinity team without lucas friday without josh bellamy without connor Byrne, without will pert smith mm -hmm. you know very possibly their four best players. Yeah. And yet they're still absolutely flying. The best team here, mm -hmm. you know, and it's been it's been clear all day that they're a top quality outfit. It's it's an astonishing level of depth as much as anything else that they've got. It really is. And I think someone like Finn Kennedy, who wouldn't normally be getting a look in with sort of uh, Connor Byrne and, and Josh Bellamy playing in those roles in which he would sort of usually find himself in. He, he, he sort of came into, really came into form uh, throughout the day. And I, I thought that it's a, a superb chance for someone like him to be able to shine. So I think, yeah, this Trinity side obviously weakened, but also so, so is this Ipswich team. No no Mark van der Veen, I mean, no uh, Harry Simpson, uh, a, a, a fair few players as well. Uh, Will Lamprell 
um, not not available. So so there are players that uh, Ipswich were missing as well. Um, and I think credit to them for, for for their performance in that final. They uh, not just in that final, but throughout the day, they, um, they they've been an impressive an impressive test, especially coming in late on. 100%. And even, you know, the, the two semi finalists that, that were knocked out, um, Epsom College and the host Seaford College, put in some, some incredible performances. And, and Sam, you and I saw, saw the plate competition with, with Christ College winning that. We've seen some, some absolutely superb performances at, at all levels, really. Yeah, I, I, and you know, schoolboy rugby is—it uh, it really does surprise you. Every time you see it, you think you're going to come along and 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 watch something that 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 isn't isn't a, a spectacular quality. And 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 you keep on thinking it's going to happen that you're going to see a dire game, but you don't. They keep on delivering. Um, you, you mentioned players there in the final. Uh, I, I'd mention one person who stood out, and, and we watched him getting a Callahan for for Brecon. I mean, he's a he's a player and a half. He really is. Oh, he was he was almost frightening to watch, wasn't he? Every time he got the ball, I thought something spectacular was going to happen. And the uh, the presentations are going on at the moment, um, but we're we're aware that you can't hear what's going on. That's why we're talking over them. But we will we will keep you abreast of who's doing what. And hey, look at that! The wonders that go on behind the scenes. We've all got a microphone now. So that's <laughs> Richard Jackson working tirelessly to make sure that we can all be heard. Um, but yeah, I, I would say uh, that again, an, another really good quality and, and credit to see for college for, for, for what they've done and how they've been able to organise it again. It isn't easy to get everyone here, to get everyone fed, let alone playing rugby. So credit to them again, really good tournament. And um, you know, schoolboy rugby is in really, really good shape. It certainly is, and Will, I suppose we're we're heading into that time of the year on the on the school scene where it, it feels like you've got big event after big event. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously it, it all reaches a crescendo with Rosson Park and and the Seaford Tens, but we've got massive sevens tournaments almost every every Wednesday and every Sunday until until the end of term, and you do get that sense of momentum and excitement building through the term, don't you? You really do, and and, it, and it, it's it's a really positive sign that a, a lot more schools this year are, are, are willing to put on these festivals, uh, which means that we, we have we have so many, so many going on. I mean, if I started to list them, then I, I, I wouldn't stop, so I won't. But um, there, there are now so many chances for these players to, to get a good taste of sevens before they get to Rosslyn Park, which of course is the main event. But but the, the benefit of that, of course, is that um, the, the, these players, when they get to Rosslyn Park, can, can, can really shine and they know how to play sevens. On your screen at the moment, I'll draw attention to him. There's Gethin O'Callaghan. Um, uh, one of his uh, colleagues in, in, in the Christ College side was saying he's, he's temporarily been let go by Cardiff. If I was Cardiff, I'd grab back hold of him pretty quickly if I were you. I certainly, w I certainly would because I can think of a few other teams that might, might come sniffing around soon. So that was Gethin O'Callaghan receiving the Try of the Tournament Award and Roma Matabalavu, the Trinity number eight slash wing, <laughs> <laughs> slash centre, slash hooker. <laughs> Earning the player of the tournament gong. What a fantastic performance it was from him throughout the day. And back-to-back and -back player of the tournament uh, awards to Trinity players after Josh Bellamy, of course, last year. Um, an impressive outfit, to say the least. Well, not only are they playing and uh, playing winning rugby, but they're playing good rugby as well, which is arguably the the, the main factor within schoolboy rugby. I mean, uh, t uh, big dogs will, will come and go within the school scene, but it's the players that will that will stay on and that will make a name for themselves. So, I think the fact that Trinity are able to to promote such running and and positive rugby means that they can create stars like Bellamy, Matabalavu, and uh, and and the list that we've already mentioned. Uh, so High Wickham picking up, uh, is this the bowl? I think that'll be the bowl that RGS High Wickham are collecting, although it does look rather like a vase, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Yes. We'll, we'll <laughs> seek clarity on that one. The bowl we do know turned into a round robin towards the end as a result of uh, one of the teams dropping out late on, but 
Well, I mean, th th that side actually, High Wycombe, probably give a really good indication of, uh, of just how good it was. So they played in the first game that I looked at today and they were excellent. I thought they were one of the teams that I thought, oh, well, th these guys would be these guys would be really, really good. So, I mean, I, th I think wherever you ended up, and I, I think some of the division between Cup and, and Plate were done on almost, you know, sort of count back and, and try scored. And it was it was really, really, you know, the, the quality throughout from every single team here is, uh, is there for all to see. So, well done to uh, RGS High Wickham. Absolutely. Showing the depth of quality in, in schools rugby beyond any shadow of a doubt. RGS High Wickham. 16, well, 15 teams here in the end and 15 top quality outfits. I think it's also good that, that we get we got uh, the, the Welsh sides involved, which obviously we don't normally get to see within the English school circuit. They very much keep to themselves. So... It's uh, it, it's 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 really it's really strong to see, and I think I think they're just about to go up to to, to pick up their plate, and uh, uh, they performed ever so well, just like they did last year, and uh, and they come and they, they just add that real sort of joker uh, into the mix, and and we never know how they're going to almost perform. in a literal sense at certain points. <laughs> yeah, um, but they 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 provide some really top quality rugby, and um, it's it's always really good to see players and teams playing against other schools that they, that they wouldn't normally get get to play against and then usual sort of 15 circuit absolutely and and not to not to sort of uh, drag us through controversial territory but i know that that was one of the things that a lot of schools were a little bit worried about with the uh, the law tweaks that w have been spoken about we, it, forget the actual laws themselves but it was there was a concern about what if we're playing under different laws to to wales or to scotland because mm. it stops that ability to play schools that you wouldn't normally come up against and to have those sort of friendships and rivalries across borders. And there's absolutely no way that the Welsh players who came over here had anything other in their mind than beating the English today. It didn't really matter who they were, did they? It was just like, we're playing the English every single time we're playing the English. And it, and it, I know it sounds ridiculous and parochial and, and, and daft, but it, it's such a fantastic... And we spoke to the uh, the, the Brecon boys, they, they came on commentary for the plate final, um, and they were... They were, they were an absolute joy, an absolute credit to their school, wonderfully polite, but so up for coming over to England and beating the English. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know, that's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, you want, you want to stick one to the, to the big brother, don't you? Uh, great, really good uh, school side uh, uh, in Brecon, Christ College. Big uh, round of applause there for the runners up Ipswich, I think. Next, we are going to see Trinity. They've had one photo up there already. They're coming up for another one. A year on. What a fantastic group of players. And possibly plenty more to come from them this year, Will. Mm. Semi final of another title defense Massive. that they've what got a, coming what up. What a game that is. What a game. Trinity versus Harrow. I mean, that is that is the game, isn't it, really, this year that, that we've all been looking forward to. And we, we were sort of looking at that side of the draw and we were going, ooh, could it, should it, would it? And, and it has. Uh, I, I'm, there's a part of me that's slightly disappointed it's not the final um, because I, I feel as though it's got that sort of feel about it. Um, but it's still going to be a massive test. And I think when they get back to full strength as well um, with, the, with the players that they're missing, it'll be really exciting. You've spoken a lot about the Trinity players who aren't here, but how big for these players to be stepping up into those moments? And, you know, so much of, of team play is about getting more than you need out there as far as quality. And, and this is what you've got. Some players here who wouldn't normally get an opportunity to get that that that, 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 that victory under their belt and go back and, and push on to the likes of Bellamy uh, and, 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 and friends and say, look, <laughs> we're here. We also want to be a part of this. It's massive for Trinity. Absolutely. And, and these are the moments that that these guys will remember forever. I mean, you know, for the majority of, of schoolboy players, these moments are the the best and most successful moments yeah. of your rugby life. You know, it's only a handful that go on to, to bigger and better things. For the vast majority, this is it, and, and you've got to go out and enjoy it. And uh, I know that these Trinity boys enjoy it an awful lot. Yeah, what a treat it's been. Thank you very much indeed uh, for having us today. Really, really good fun. Thank you, awesome. Angus, as always, Next Gen, providing 
a, a perfect platform for these youngsters to perform on and uh, and it's really really been an enjoyable day thank you angus well thank you and more to the point thank both of you very much for your for your time and for your words and we will uh, we will hear from you soon no doubt but from all of us here at seaford college thank you very much for watching trinity are your 2023 seaford tens champions back-to-back -back champions and perhaps the first of many back-to-backs for them this season
Thank you.